seal greater trust in government institutions and bring the country closer to achieving its national development goals. The Government Procurement Policy Board focuses on simplifying various processes to produce more successful procurement that contributes to the effectiveness and efficiency of the government. The board employs strategies to identify needs and implement projects. It refines and calibrates procurement policies, adjusting to emerging trend based on needs of procuring entities. It creates ways to capacitate practitioners to better manage their procurement processes, monitor effectiveness of our procurement systems, and it adapts to the times, especially during national emergencies. The GPPB has strengthened the procurement process at the earliest stage, the planning phase. The board has issued bidding rules, responsive to new laws and policies set by the government. GPPB has also streamlined the bidding process through the use of technology. GPPB has introduced guidelines to ensure timely procurement, especially during a national emergency. GPPB Technical Support Office pioneered initiatives to better assist procuring entities. Simple and competitive, transparent and accountable, monitored by the people. These make for an effective procurement system, responsive to the needs of the people. The GPPB, adapting, responding, innovating for nation building. To know more about procurement, visit gppb.gov.ph. The Philippines is going to buy green. Our government is taking the lead. The Philippines Green Public Procurement Roadmap guides the way forward by considering local business capacities, climate, environment, health, and value for money. Our government procures thousands of items every year to serve the Filipino people. When government is the single largest buyer in a market, its procurement decisions influence the direction that businesses take. Green public procurement is about buying products which are low carbon, are healthier, avoid harmful chemicals, and are manufactured through cleaner processes. They are efficient to use and consume less energy and water. At the end of life, precious materials are recycled. GBP reduces the pressure on the environment. GPP is a partnership between the government and businesses. GPP opens up new, exciting, and reliable opportunities for businesses supplying green products. This in turn makes green products also affordable for private households. The first batch of 20 product categories has been prioritized for GPP and more will be selected over time. The priority common supplies and equipment products are multi-copy paper, toilet paper, record books, cleaners, chairs, disinfectant sprays, trash bags, liquid hand soap, detergent powder, and LED lights and bulbs. The priority non-common supplies and equipment products are computer and laptop monitors, air conditioners, vehicles, fridges and freezers, copiers, paints and varnishes, food and catering services, training hotels and facilities, toilets and urinals, and textiles such as uniforms and work clothes. The well-established public procurement processes in the Philippines, such as the Philgems, will ensure fairness, transparency, and open competition for the green venture. Everyone can become an active consumer of green products, which save energy and water, are not harmful for health and climate, and which are recyclable. A beautiful Monday morning to everyone. Mabuhay!
Before we start, may I request the Zoom participants to give us a quick thumbs up just to be certain that you can hear me loud and clear. And on that note, we would like to welcome everyone to the online training for the Municipal Local Government Units on Republic Act Number 9184 and its 2016 Revised Implementing Rules and Regulations, brought to you by the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office. This is Janelle de la Cruz from the Capacity Development Division, and I will be your facilitator for this week-long virtual learning session. To proceed with the course of the program, allow me to discuss our webinar etiquette and requirements. First, please change your name using the required format that is your municipal local government unit name underscore your full name for us to properly identify you and monitor your attendance to this virtual event. In order to maintain clarity and to be able to properly manage the time, Microphone shall be muted throughout the session. Please also be informed that this virtual event is being recorded and is simultaneously being broadcasted live in our official Facebook page. At the end of our learning session, we shall be having an open forum. Please be advised that only questions related to the learning session shall be accommodated by our resource speaker. For questions, kindly use our Zoom chat box. And for our Facebook Live viewers, you may also participate and send your questions through the comment section. Participants can start dropping their questions in the Zoom chat box and Facebook Live comment section while, learning, while the learning session is ongoing. Please also be advised that participants shall be asked to answer series of knowledge check questions. The Zoom, through the Zoom polling feature, we shall be administered in between the discussion wherein the correct answer shall be discussed by our resource speaker. To commemorate this virtual event, participants shall be asked for a group photo session towards the end of our program. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, please let us know through the Zoom chat box and a member of our technical secretariat will directly coordinate with you to address your concerns. After the end of the program, participants are likewise reminded to evaluate the training activity and resource speaker through the Google form. The link will be shared to you by our event secretariat. Rest assured that all information gathered for this online training shall be treated with utmost confidentiality consistent with the provisions of the Data Privacy Act. Important reminders on the certificates. Certificate of attendance shall only be issued to confirm participants who are present all throughout the five-day activity. Certificate of completion shall only be awarded to confirm participants who successfully completed the online training, participated in the knowledge check question, and complied with all the requirements. Otherwise, certificate of participation shall be furnished. For concerns and, and other questions, please contact us through the email flashed in your screen. And finally, we would like to inform everyone that GPPDTSO is already on social media. To be updated with the latest policy issuances, trainings, and other important announcements of the GPPBTSO, all you have to do is like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us at our Twitter account at Government Procurement PH. So before we start, let us begin by singing the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by the opening prayer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lovingly Heavenly Father, today we thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together on this day. May you bless the speakers for the knowledge that they will share. May you bless the participants to use this knowledge to the fulfillment of their goals. May you bless all the people behind this activity so that they may continue creating procurement initiatives with a spirit of joy and utmost passion. We seek for your guidance as we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, a blessed mor Monday morning to all our part participants and welcome to the first day of our online training. To officially commence and welcome all of us, joining us today, the Executive Director of the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office, to give her opening message, please welcome Attorney Rowena Candice Ruiz. A pleasant morning to all of our brave procurement practitioners in the local government unit. This is Rowena Candice Ruiz of the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office. Warmly welcome you all to this learning session. This year's training for our procurement practitioners in the municipal local government units marks our return to the face-to-face -face training, albeit a blended one. So while you're attending this online, we do have a face-to-face -face learning session scheduled for October and November. I'm also happy to share with you that since we launched this initiative, we are already halfway through our target of training all municipal local government units in the Philippines. Indeed, way before the Mandanas ruling, the Government Procurement Policy Board through its technical support office has been working hard to curate training modules designed for local government procurement. Because we consider local government units as our vital ally in making procurement a strategic imperative to good governments. This year also uh, marks a good year for updating all of you with the new rules, particularly on community participation. So do watch out for that. With your help and support, we are confident that together we can make things happen for effective and agile public service delivery. I thus encourage everyone's lively and active participation in today's learning session and the days to come. We also appreciate your feedback and suggestions so we can continuously improve our capacity development programs. Muli po, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. All right. Thank you so much, Attorney Rowena Candice Ruiz, Executive Director of the GPPBTSO, for officially opening today's virtual activity. At this juncture, before we proceed to the lecture proper, let me have a quick overview of the program of activities for this five-day online training for the municipal local government units nationwide. The training is specifically designed to capacitate MLGUs on the salient and updated provisions of RA9184 and its 2016 revised IRR. At the end of this online training, we hope to improve your social service delivery in the country by effectively and efficiently planning your procurement projects and implementations that are transparent and compliant to the procurement law. And with that, for today's session, we will be tackling a full session on Government Procurement 101. And for session number two, the topic is on efficient procurement measures, simplified posting and electronic submissions of procurement reports, procurement updates, policies, and innovations. For tomorrow, we will be tackling about procurement planning and budget linkage, including early procurement activities. For our day three, our topic is on standard bidding procedures for goods, infrastructure projects, and consulting services. For day four, our topic is on alternative methods of procurement. And for the last day of our training, we will be tackling about protest mechanism and blacklisting guidelines and 
for the last topic, it is on penal, civil, and administrative provisions. All right. So ready na po ba tayong lahat? Let us now move on to the lecture proper for the first topic of our online training. With that, allow me to introduce our resource speaker this morning. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our session's resource speaker. Our resource speaker graduated at the St. Paul University to Gigarao City, Cagayan in 1998, with a bachelor's degree in science and accountancy in which he is a government scholarship grantee under the National Integrated Study Grant Program. In, to, in 2007, he earned his master's degree in business administration in the same university. He is also a part-time instructor at the said university in accounting and taxation subjects. Currently, he is a member of the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Association of CPAs in Education, and Government Association of CPAs. Joining us today, Senior Budget and Management Specialist of the Department of Budget Ma and Management Regional Office 2, and a GPPB recognized trainer, please welcome Mr. Reynaldo Arvillon. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your day one of our online training for RA9184 and its implementing rules and regulations for MLGUs. Before I start, can I have a thumbs up if you can see my slide and if you can hear me clearly? And thank you. So welcome to our day one. So our first topic for this morning will be Government Document 101. So similar to uh, many subjects we have in college, no, uh, our discussion will start with the basic principles of what uh, government procurement is. So our outline for discussion or objectives for this module will be the following. Number one, um, participants are expected to develop broader knowledge on the major concepts of the government procurement activities and processes. Ayan. Second, we are all expected to acquire knowledge also on how to ensure effective, efficient, and ethical government procurement operations in their uh, respective areas of responsibility. And um, we are also expected to gather uniform interpretations of the RA9184 and its 2016 revised implementing rules and regulations. Okay, as we all know, we have our 2016 revised IRR, no? um, for those who have yet to participate in any formal trainings related to our uh, latest IRR, no? this will be your uh, time no? to learn what are the different amendments and updates of RA9184 no? throughout the whole series. No? Whole series of this training, we'll be able to uh, determine no? what are the new rules that are being implemented by this IRR. And of course, we are also expected to compare you know, our latest IRR from your previous IRR na ginagamit natin natin. Okay? In order to attain those objectives will be the following. First, we'll be discussing a little bit of history. Ayan. So, uh, the Philippine government procurement laws, then and now. Makita po natin yung pagbabago. And then second, we'll be discussing the Government Procurement Policy Board and its Technical Supports Office. Malalaman natin dito kung ano po ang maitutulong sa atin, ang ating Government Procurement Policy Board, including the Technical Supports Office in, in helping us uh, implement our procurement activities. Yan, anong trabaho nila, functions, yan. Third, we'll be discussing the principles of public procurement. Okay, fourth, we'll be discussing the key concepts of government procurement. Okay, uh, terms that we need to remember. Ano ba yung mga terms na kailangan natin malaman so that all of us will have a common understanding on what these concepts are all about. 
And then after that, we'll be discussing the scope and application of RA 9184 and its revised implementing rules and regulations. And then our sixth topic will be discussing the responsibilities of every individual playing a role in government procurement. And sino ang may responsibilidad sa ganito? May titignan natin kung, kung ano ang responsibilidad ng ating head of procuring entity, ng ating bids and awards committee, ng ating back secretaria, ng technical working group, ng mga observers natin. Kasama na rin po yung mga end users natin. And finally, tulad ng inasahan na marami, okay, kasi naririnig na po natin, no, many, many, Organizations, including their bids and awards committee, have no have experience having some litigations related to government procurement reform act. Ano naman po no ang uh, incentives na pwede naming receive Okay, so we'll be discussing legal indemnification packages for the bids and awards committee. Ayan, kapag ka merong mga demanda ang receive ano ang gagawin? Refundable ba ang mga to? Okay, yun po yung didiscuss natin sa huling portion ng ating, ng ating presentation. Okay? Ayan. So, once again, good morning. No, while we are discussing, please uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. And then, of course, if you have any questions or issues related to our to our discussion, no, please feel free to type them in our chat box. Ayan. So, may chat box po tayo dito sa ating Zoom meeting. So, please type them. No? Our our facilitator or our secretariat will be taking note of them, and so we'll be uh, answering whatever questions you may have related to the topic uh, during the open forum. So just just could just just type your questions. Kung may mga tanong po tayo, pero ang sasagutin lang po natin at ipipresent natin during the open forum are only those related to our discussion. Kasi there are other discussions that will be undertaken tomorrow and the next days to come. Some of those, if those questions will be answered in those uh, presentations, no, hindi na po namin ipipresent to, pero ipipresent na lang po namin no, pagdating po nung topic na yun para, para masagot po. Okay? Okay. So, ready na ba tayo? Kung ready na tayo, kindly type 1 in our chat box. Type 1 in our chat box. That will be our medium of communication. Ayan, para makita namin kung lahat po ay nakaharap na sa kanilang mga monitors, sa kanilang mga gadgets. Okay. Thank you. Let's proceed. Tingnan natin, no? ano bang history ng ating RA9184, ng ating procurement policy? Actually, uh, our procurement policy started even during the time of the American era, no, 1900s. Okay, so when procurement policy was introduced by the American government no, when we were under their colony. So in-introduce na po nila sa atin ang procurement, ang public bidding, and years after, dami-dami na po nating policy na inilabas dito sa ating government. No, marami na po mga polisiya, mga circulars, mga... Uh, resolutions na ginagamit ng maraming government agencies sa kanilang procurement. Okay, in fact, prior to 2003, our government has been using at least 100 policies, no? 100 uh, policies composed of executive orders, memorandum circular, administrative issuances that are used by uh, various government sectors in their procurement. No? The problem is, um, the LGU sector is using a separate law, no, yung ating Republic Act 7160. Okay, national government agencies, are you also using a different policy? Okay, um, we apply various policies depending on the type of procurement. Magkaibang policy kapag ka batas, kapag ka ang ating pro procure ay procurement of goods. Ibang batas naman kapag ka ito ay procurement of infra. Ibang rule naman kapag ka ito ay procurement of consulting services. So because of this, no, our government initiated no, um, a process of consolidating all these policies into one standard policy. Gusto nila, regardless of what government agency we may belong, okay, regardless of what procurement process we will be undertaking or procurement activity we will be doing, 
we should be using a single policy, and that is the birth of RA 9184 or Government Procurement Reform Act, which was enacted in January 10, 2003. Yan. Matanong ko po yung mga nandito ngayon. No? Sino po sa inyo ang nasa government na noong January 10, 2003? Yan. Paki, paki-type po yung ako sa ating chat box kung kayo nasa government na during those times. Bakit? Kasi during those times, no, dapat ginagamit na natin ang Government Procurement Reform Act okay, as the policy uh, to be used in conducting procurement transactions. And then, on October 8, 2003, inilabas po ng ating, ng ating gobyerno yung ating first implementing rules and regulations. Ito po ay IRR Part A. Parang pelikula lang, di ba? Kung may Part A, parang aasahan mo may Part B, may Part C, may Part D, baka hanggang Part Z yan. Okay, kaya lang, no? uh, pinag-aralan po at nagkaroon ng maraming consultation ang ating Government Procurement Policy Board kasama ng Technical Supports Office sa lahat ng mga procurement practitioners, not only government institutions, but also private counterparts, mga lahat ng stakeholders. At hindi na po lumabas si Part B. Okay, ang intention po sana nung araw, Part A should have been intended only to cover those domestically funded projects. Those projects that are funded by government of the Philippines using the GAA, using our corporate budget, or using our using our uh, appropriation ordinances. Okay? And Part B was intended to cover foreign assisted projects or yung tinatawag natin na foreign funded projects. Kaya lang hindi na po nilabas si Part B. Okay. Instead of coming out with Part B, noong September 2, 2009, ang nilabas na lang po ng ating gobyerno ay yung ating revised implementing rules and regulations. Wala na po siyang Part A, wala na rin po siyang Part B because this will only be the implementing rules and regulations of RA 9184 to be used Okay, for both domestically funded and foreign assisted projects subject to certain conditions, especially for foreign assisted projects. Ayan. Pero pag nakikita po natin, in spite of having the implementing rules and regulations noong araw, kung kayo po yung nasa gobyerno na, seemingly there are certain gray areas pa that will have to be improved on the process of procurement. Okay, ano yung mga issue na yun? No? One issue is that during the Part A, nakalagay doon, uh, ang publication natin sa ating mga bid opportunities should run for 14 calendar days. Can you remember that? Kung kayo nasa back, who can remember that? Noong 2003, no, paki-type paki po ang number one sa inyong chat box if you can remember that. And other participants, pagmasdan po ninyo mga nag-type ng number one, malapit na po mag-retire ang mga yan. <laughs> okay. Hitting aside, Sa anong ginawa? Okay, instead of uh, maintaining that kasi nakita na masyado mahaba yata ang publication natin. Okay, ngayon, uh, nilesen po siya sa ating 2009 IRR. Ginawa na lang po siya 7 calendar days. So as you can see, our government policy is evolving. Yeah, depending on the situation, responding to whatever issues that government agencies as well as private practitioners are experiencing during implementation of programs. Okay, so ginamit natin ang revised IRR 2009 version starting September 2. Okay, at hindi pa rin, nagkar- hindi pa rin po nawala yung mga gray areas. So, nagkaroon pa rin po ng mga issues, concerns yung ating mga practitioners. Marami pa rin consultation na ginawa. Until such time na maglabas po ng panibagong IRR. And that is yung 2016 revised implementing rules and regulations natin. So that was the the latest, no? yan po yung pinakabagong IRR na gagamitin natin. And that will be our discussion for our training no? for the next days to inform you about the policies of the IRR. If you are old back members, you've been back members since 2003, part of, this, uh, part of the knowledge that uh, we should gain from the series of training that we'll have is comparing no yung mga previous IRRs na ginagamit natin ng araw kumpara dito sa ating 2016 IRR. Okay? 
So bakit nga ba nagkaroon tayo ng Republic Act 9184? Why do we need to develop this? Why do the government um, uh, came up no, with this policy? Because of many challenges that our government has experienced prior to the enactment of Government Procurement Reform Act. Ano mga challenges siya? Number one, there were confusions caused by fragmented legal system. Kasi sa dami po ng mga rules and regulations na kailangan basahin at aralin, not only by government agencies but also by private institutions, uh, nakakapag, napapagbalitag po nila yung mga policy when it comes to implementation. And of course, that would lead into violating the policy. Kasi pag napagbalitag mo yung policy, kahit tama yung policy na yan pero nagamit mo sa ibang pamamaraan, you will still consider your procurement transaction to be not valid. So the solution is that to enact a government procurement reform act that will tend to consolidate all these policies no, para isang polisiya na lang ang gagamitin natin. Okay. Another challenge is uh, dati meron tayong inconsistent policies, rules, and regulations due to lack of standards. Bakit? Government agencies, based on their policies, are using their own rules, using their own forms, okay, using their own processes, no? when it comes to conducting procurement. Bakit? Kasi wala tayong standard na sinusunod eh. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang barangay, ibang polisiya ang kanyang ginagamit kung ikukumpara natin sa munisipyo. And in that case, sabi nga, dahil inconsistent yung policy, that we don't have any idea whether any of these institutions are violating na the policy. Kasi nga, iba yung polisiya natin sa polisiya nila. So, we cannot be able to Chat, no? Hindi natin pwedeng i-check yung kanilang policy kasi hindi natin alam kung ano yung policy yung kanilang sinusunod. Okay? This might also occur no? sa ating RA9184. Kaya lang, ang solution na nilagay sa ating GPRA is they have created Government Procurement Policy Board as an institution. Okay? As an institution that will spearhead the... Uh, uh, um, Introduction, ayan. information dissemination, ayan. issuance of policies. So, siya na lang po, pwede mag, mag-issue ng policy, mga circulars, mga resolutions. At ang maganda dito, ang magbigay ng opinion doon sa mga interpretations doon sa ating mga provisions ng RE9184. Okay, so kung may mga nalilito ka ng konti sa implementation ng mga programs mo, okay, sa procurement activities mo, all you have to do, is to visit the website of the Government Procurement Policy Board. Download the circulars, download the resolutions, read the non-policy matter opinions, read the policy matter opinions, download the standard manuals, documents, bid forms. Okay, So at least, when we are referring to a single institution as our reference for inform- of information, then we, we can be assured that we're using the same, uh, the same forms, the same manuals, okay, the same, ano pa, the same bidding documents. Yeah. So, na-standardize natin yung ating procurement transactions. Third, lack of transparency. No, dati, no, before RA9184 sa mga local government units, magugulat na lang yung mga tao na merong biglang dumating na delivery na hindi naman nila alam kung nakapagkandak sila ng procurement. Okay? In some instances, There are also issues on ghost procurement in, in many LGUs okay, in the past. But of course, uh, excluding yung mga LGUs na participant natin ngayon. Kasi wala naman tayo mga ghost employees or ghost transactions siguro ng araw. Pero maraming nagsasabi ng mga ghost transaction. Bakit? Because the government prior to GPRA do not have any transparency requirement. Or kung meron man, hindi ganun ka-transparent. Okay? Sa anong solution na nilagay sa ating Government Procurement Policy Board or uh, binigay ng ating RA9184 or Government Procurement Reform Act? Okay? Yung mandatory use ng ating Philippine Government Electronic Procurement System or PhilGEPS. Ayan, di ba? Okay? So, meron na tayong PhilGEPS na ginagamit. So, in many procurement activities that we do now in our organization, we are required no, to use Philippine Government Electronic Procurement System as our portal for publishing both our opportunities and awards of contract. 
Pero hindi naman po natin sinasabi na lahat ng transaction kailangan i-publish sa Philippine Government Procurement System. No? Malalaman natin later on in our topics in the future, pag tapot po tayo dun sa mga methods of procurement, na hindi naman po nila lahat ng ating government uh, procurement reform act na i-publish sa PhilGEPS lahat ng mga opportunities and awards. May mga exception lang sa naman po dyan. Okay? And finally, lack of check and balance. Kasi procurement then were controlled by few individuals. No? Halimbawa, sa local government unit nung araw, sabi nila, sabi nila, sabi nila, eh isang tao, dalawang tao lang nagko-control sa procurement transaction. Okay? Bakit? Kasi walang nag nagbabantay sa kanila. No? Walang tumitingin sa kanila na hindi empleyado ng LGU. So anong solution na ibinigay po ng ating GPRA? Okay, the mandatory invitation of observers in some of the procurement activities that we do. Yung po yung tinatawag natin na participation of civil society organizations in our procurement transactions. Okay, so during procurement or especially when we do competitive bidding, okay, the policy requires us to invite at least the observers. At least kapag mayroong tatlong observers na nandun na tumitingin sa ginagawa natin during the bidding procedure, nagiging mas okay, cautious. No? Procuring entities, bids and awards committee are, tend to be more uh, cautious in their actions considering that there are other people not belonging in the organization uh, looking at their processes. Yan. So yung yung rason kung bakit yung mga policies ng no, ating RA9184 sometimes mandatory. They, they have certain objectives. Okay, and that that is to absorb or to 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 respond to the different challenges that this government experienced prior to government procurement reform. Ayan. So ano po yung purpose kung bakit inilabas ng ating government procurement reform? Tatlo lang po. Number one, we standardize our procurement processes. Meaning, standard process, proseso na ginagamit ng barangay, proseso na ginagamit ng munisipyo, proseso na ginagamit ng probinsya ay pareho. Okay? So, if, if, if the amount says it should be competitive bidding, the competitive bidding procedure to be used by the barangay, munisipyo, or province should be the same. Okay? The documents to be used should also be the same. No? The bidding document to be used should also be the same. Okay? The forms to be used should also be the same. Ayan. So, that is we standardize the procurement process. Meaning, we are now adopting the same processes. Okay? If uh, it calls for competitive bidding, the processes that we should adopt should be in accordance to the standard process for competitive bidding. If we are allowed to use alternative method of procurement, the standard process for that alternative method of procurement, including the documentation, should also be the same. Okay? Second, to modernize. Modernize meaning incorporating new technologies in our procurement activities. Ano mga yun? Such as the use of the internet. That's the reason why every time we conduct competitive bidding, we are required to publish it in our field gems. Modernization will also be adopting new platforms in our procurement. Ano mga platforms na yun? Okay, yung panibagong platform natin ngayon, which is no mandatory, is the use of social media in publishing both our opportunities and awards of contract. So, kailangan na natin publish sa social media natin, pati sa mga opportunities at awards of contract. Ano pa? By using new platforms in conducting meetings. Ngayon, pwede na tayong mag-conduct ng meeting gamit yung ganitong platform, Zoom. Tama? Mag-meeting tayo ng back, Zoom nang ginagamit natin, nag-training tayo ng back, nag-zoom na rin tayo, or whatever available online platforms in our office. So that is modernizing our procurement transactions. Okay, and finally, to regulate. Yan. But at least, there is somebody, someone looking into how we implement our projects, how we implement our procurement transaction. RA9184 is requiring us to submit some documents to this committee, sa ating, sa ating uh, uh, government procurement policy board. That's the reason why part of the policy is that for government agencies to be submitting their annual procurement plan, their procurement monitoring reports, 
and their APCPI to the GPPBTSO. Okay? So that's part of the regulatory measure. Okay? So we need to regulate, no? And the regulatory measures is intended to determine what are the different aspects that will need to be improved in our procurement processes in order to make our procurement policy better. Yun naman ang intention mo. Okay? Wala naman po siyang intention to punish. Okay? Pero, in some instances, no? The regulatory uh, requirement would affect no yung mga incentives natin sa ating agency and what are those incentives eh kapag ka halimbawa uh, hindi ka nagsasubmit ng APP mo ng PMR mo ay mahari hindi po kayo makareceive ng ating mga performance based bonuses or PBB so may mga may mga effect pa rin po yan pero of course the real intention is to determine okay how effective our policy is and also to identify some areas that will have to be will have to be improved. Okay? Ayan. Ma'am, first knowledge check tayo. Yes, sir. So at this point, we will be having our first knowledge check. So may we ask our participants to select their answer via the Zoom polling feature. Our question is, When was the GPRA enacted? A. January 10, 2003 B. January 10, 2004 Or letter C. January 10, 2005 Again, when was the GPRA enacted? Is it A. January 10, 2003 Or B. January 10, 2004 Or letter C. January 10, 2005 So uh, we will be closing our Zoom polling feature in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So sir, most of our participants answered January 10, 2003. So is this the correct answer po? Thank you very much, Ma'am Janelle. And thank you for those who have participated. No, Ang tamang sagot po natin, January 10, 2003. Yeah, as presented in the previous slide. Thank you, Ma'am Janelle. Thank you, sir. So let's now proceed po for the continuation of our lecture. We proceed. No, let's talk about the Government Procurement Policy Board and its Technical Support Office. Sino nga ba si GPPB, di ba? Sino nga ba si GPPB? The Government Procurement Policy Board was actually created by RA 9184. Okay, it's composed of 12 mem regular members. Okay, uh, the DDM being the chairman and the NEDA as the co-chair. Yan, ang members po niya, nandiyan po si DPWH, DTI, DOH, DND, DEPED, DOF, DILG, DOST, DOTR, DOE, DICT, okay, a Philippine Space Agency and Private Sector Representative. Kung tatanin niyo po sa akin, eh nasaan po si LGU dyan? So, si LGU po is represented by the Department of the Interior and Local Government. So, nandiyan po yan. Okay? Ano po ang functions ni GPPB? No? Tatlo lang po yung kanyang general functions. Number one, policy making. Okay? As policy making body, GPPB is being provided you know, the function in our IRR to amend the implementing rules and regulations and procurement law, of the, the IRR of our procurement law. Okay, ibig sabihin meron po siyang tinatawag na quasi-legislative function. That's the reason why, kung napansin po ninyo, meron na po tayong tatlong implementing rules and regulations na lumabas, pero nag-iisang batas lang po yung ating tinutukoy. Okay, reason, nagiging mas flexible ang ating policy because any moment that it would need amendment, retooling, improvement, development, the GPPB may do the amendment of our implementing rules and regulations. Okay? Another is that the GPPB is also responsible in the preparation of the generic procurement manuals and the standard bidding forms, including the bidding documents. Okay? Kaya kung gusto natin basahin yung manual natin, kung paano natin gagawin yung mga procurement transactions natin, just go to the website of GPTB and download the generic procurement manual. 
So nakapag-issue na po tayo ng manuals na gagamitin ng lahat ng government agencies, not only for LGUs but also for national government agencies. And just recently, sa 2020 lang, no, nag-issue na rin po ng bagong Philippine Bidding Documents ang ating GPPD. I hope you have read that already or you have downloaded a copy of that already because starting 2020, dapat yun na po yung ginamit natin na bidding, na bidding document. Okay? Another function of GPPB is capacity development. Katulad ng ginagawa natin ngayon. Okay? So GPPB is also responsible in establishing a sustainable training program for all procurement practitioners, not only in the government side but also in the private side. So the GPPB caters both government agencies and private entities No, in order to help them, help them comply with our procurement policy, to introduce to them policies, to to inform them about the processes that they will be, they should be adopting or we should be adopting, pertaining to our procurement transaction. Okay, and then finally, monitoring. Yeah, so may monitoring functions po siya. Okay, and yon monitoring functions would require us to submit. You see, nasabi ko kanina the annual procurement plan, the procurement monitoring report, and the APCBI. Purpose, this is to ensure the proper implementation by procuring entities of the Act and the IRR and all other relevant rules and regulations on public procurement. And para makita po natin kung talaga nga pong ginagamit ng government agency yung ating procurement policy. Okay. And of course, this will also be a process of reviewing Uh, the effectiveness of the procurement law. Para makita natin kung effective pa rin ba yung policy niya. So kung hindi na po siya effective, that's the time when the, procure, the, the government procurement policy board will again study, conduct uh, consultations on what possible development will have to be implemented in order to make our procurement policy um, consistent or probably responsive of the needs of the procuring entities and the private entities. Yan. So, yun ang purpose. Kaya po nag-e-evolve yung ating policy. Okay, so that you will be expecting every now and then that there will be many resolutions to be issued. At baka in the near future, magkalag na naman tayo ng panibagong IRR. Okay? So, sino naman si GPPB Technical Supports Office? So, si PSO. Okay? Uh, the Technical Supports Office, uh, kaya nga tinawag na Support Office because they provide support in the performance of the duties and responsibilities of the GPPB, particularly in its spearheading the implementation of public procurement reform initiative in the Philippines. So, si GPPB kasi, kung napansin nyo kanina, composed of, of different organizations. So, the problem is, eh, sino ngayon ang tutulong sa kanila para, para, para ma-organize, ma no? ma, ma mabuo, okay, magkandak ng study, yan, nandiyan po si Technical Supports Office. Okay, kami po, no, patulad ng mga kasama natin sa training ngayon, okay, kami po ay taga GPPB Technical Supports Office, pero ako po, nandito ako sa region po ngayon, part po ako ng regional arm ng ating GPPB TSO for training. Okay, so ang functions ng GPPB po ay ito, number one, help the Uh, um, help the GPPB no? functions the GPPB TSO help the GPPB to develop uh, standard bidding documents and forms and so si GPPB TSO po ang tumulong para uh, lumabas yung ating 6th edition Philippine bidding documents ano yun? ano pa? they also help in the development of procurement manuals okay we also in the TSO no Uh, do policy recommendations and rule drafting. Parang secretariat functions, di ba? Okay? Ayan, secretariat functions. We also help evaluation of government procurement system. And of course, that will be our raw material for developing uh, recommendations no, and new rules no, sa ating procurement policy. Okay, the GPPBTS also conduct trainings. Ah, yeah, ito meron tayong pinatawag na yun, online training for local government units. Okay, kasi sila po no, ang nagkakandak ng training. Lahat po ng mga training um, request dapat dumaan sa kanila kung may mga future trainings kayo. No, uh, kailangan lang po na idaan natin kay GPPTSO. Okay, monitor compliance of procuring entities to our procurement policies. Kaya po nire-require tayo na mag-submit ng ating APCPI. 
And of course, monitor the effectiveness of the government electronic procurement system. Yung paggamit po natin ng ating field jobs. No? In, intention is for us to um, identify, again, gray areas that will have to be improved or need to be developed. So yung PIM functions ng ating GPPB Technical Supports Office. Okay? Now, if you want to get information okay, related to uh, uh, Government Procurement Policy Board, okay, you just have to go only to the website. Punta po kayo sa website. Ano mo, maganda po ito. Pag binabasa po yung website, makikita po nyo dyan yung, yung mga document probably that we may need in the implementation of our programs with the conduct of our procurement activities. So, ang website po ng GPPB ay www.gppb.gov.ph Okay, yan po yung ating online portal. Pagkikita po natin dyan yung ating online blacklisting portal. Yan, yung mga blacklisted suppliers, contractors, and consultants. Nandiyan po. Meron po tayong online training management system. Nandiyan po rin yung ating Philippine Bidding Document Builder. If you want to prepare your bidding document online, you just have to visit our website. If you want to have a template of our annual procurement plan, procurement monitoring reports, and any other forms that we can use in our procurement transactions, pwede po natin i-download dyan. And of course, references no? sa, mga, sa mga issues related to procurement. No? Nandiyan po yung mga resolutions, circulars, the policy itself, yung RA9184, including its latest IRR, pwede po natin ma-download dyan. The standard bidding documents, forms, and others. And of course, meron po siyang frequently asked questions. No? Kung may mga uh, problema tayo sa ating procurement, baka nasagot na yan sa FAQs. No? Just visit this FAQs and look into whether some of the questions there are similar to our issues. Then we can use that in making our decisions. Okay? Yan. Again, kung may mga tanong po tayo, feel free to type them in our chat box no? para ma-consolidate ma po natin at masagot natin sa ating, sa ating open forum. Okay. Yan. One time, may isang LGU po dito sa aming area, no? dito sa Region 2, kasi nasa Tugigro po ako yan, na lumapit. Okay, bakit? Kasi nakatanggap daw po sila ng sulat galing kay Office of the Ombudsman. Tama? Isang opisina na gustong-gusto natin makatanggap ng sulat. Tama? Yes? Sino po sa inyo ang gustong makatanggap ng sulat kay Office of the Ombudsman? Paki-type po yung ako sa ating chat box in bold letters. Ayan, para makita po namin at i-request namin sa Ombudsman na sulatan po kayo. Okay? Ang tanong po niya, ay, tingnan mo na, bakit siya sinulatan yung Office of the Ombudsman? Uh, para kumustahin siya, hindi. No? Dahil apparently, Si Ombudsman daw ay nakatanggap ng letter, complaint, galing sa isang taxpayer na itong government agency po na to ay uh, may violation daw no, sa ating RA 9184. Bakit? Kasi daw po sa lahat ng kontrata na, na ginawa ng agency na to, ng LGU na to, uh, many contracts costing millions, eh, sa isang supplier lang daw po nila ina-award. No, sa anibawa, meron siyang 20 contracts Isang supplier lang ang nananalo sa 20 contracts na yun. Okay? Kaya meron yung reklamo. Okay? Nung lumapit po sa aming opisina at nagtanong kung paano po sila mag-respond sa letter, sabi namin, okay, all you have to do is to prove compliance with the principles of public procurement. Yan. Patunahin mo lang na na-comply mo o, or nasunod mo yung iba't ibang prinsipyo ng ating public procurement. And what are those principles that will, they will have to prove Compliance with. Okay, lima lang naman. Number one, the principle of public monitoring. What's the principle of public monitoring? Pag sinabi natin public monitoring, we are referring to the constituents. Hindi po ba? Okay, the capacity of the public to determine or to have knowledge or information about the procurement transactions being conducted by the procuring entity. Kakayanan na malaman. May, may, may pagkakataon ba na malaman ng ating constituents na yung ating procurement ay ginagawa? Okay? So, they will have to prove compliance with that. Okay? Ano pa? Number two, the principle of accountability. What do you mean principle of accountability? That people who should be doing their work related to the procurement are actually the people that are doing the work. 
Okay? Alam po natin ang procurement ay hindi trabaho ng isang tao. Okay? Marami, pong, marami pong tao na involved dito sa procurement na to. Principle of accountability would mean uh, determining the responsibility of individual that should be doing that particular activity in the procurement process. So example, okay, pag sinabi natin PR preparation, gagawa tayo ng purchase request, sino nga ba ang responsibilidad dito? No? May responsibilidad dito sa preparation ng purchase request. Sige nga, pakita nga sa inyong chat box. Sino? Ayan, kung sino ang responsible, responsible po doon sa preparation ng purchase request. Okay? Pag sinabi na po natin na pag sinabi po natin na conduct of bidding procedure, sino po ang may responsibilidad dito? Yan. So, principle of accountability is identifying our responsibility as part of the organization. Kung ikaw si end user, kung ikaw si ba, kung ikaw si hope, kung ikaw si back secretariat, at kung ikaw si TWG, you must know your role. And of course, as a result of that, okay, the person should only be held accountable of his responsibility. Yung po yung accountability portion. Sabi nga ni Spider-Man sa kanyang pelikula, tama? Okay? Man of great powers comes great responsibility. Tama po ba yun, di ba? Kasi nung kayo po ay nanumpa, no? eh, nagkaroon po kayo ng powers. Pero, kakibat po nun may responsibility po kayo. Pero hindi po natatapos doon yung, yung, yung kanyang phrase. Dapat eh. Man of great responsibility comes also with great accountability. Gagawin nyo ha? Kapag kalimbawa may nagko-complain sa ating mga procurement transactions, all you have to do is to show compliance with the different principles. And of course, you must have a proof that you have complied them. Okay? Clear? Ayan. Ma'am, second knowledge share po tayo. Yes, sir. So at this point, we will be having another knowledge check. So please select your answer via the Zoom polling feature. The question is, GPPB TSO provides support in the performance of the duties and responsibilities of GPPB, particularly in spearheading the implementation of public procurement reform initiatives in the Philippines. Is it true or false? Again, the question is, the GPPB TSO provides support in the performance of the duties and responsibilities of GPPB, particularly in spearheading the implementation of public procurement reform initiatives in the Philippines. So is it A, true, or B, false? So our FB live viewers may also uh, type in their answer in the comment section. And Billy Bayong will assist you also if you have any other concerns. So we will be closing the poll feature in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So sir, most of our participants, 87% per, answered true. Ayan. Thank you very much, Mom Janelle. No? Ulitin natin yung question. No? GPPBTS provides support. No, ayan, underline the word support no, to the performance and of duties of the response and responsibilities of the GPPB. Okay, because of the term support, and po sa pangalan, technical support sa office, ang tamang sagot po natin ay true. Ayan, mga congratulations sa mga nakakuha, sa mga hindi, good luck po sa next question natin. Thank you, Ma'am Janelle. Thank you, sir. So uh, we will be continuing our lecture. Very much. So moving on, let's go now to the key concepts of procurement that we should remember. Different terminologies that we need to remember every time we do procurement activity. And number one, procurement. What is procurement? Okay, sika, kailan, kailan, ba, kailan ba nagiging procurement ang isang transaction? Okay, minsan merong nagtanong, sabi niya, um, 
barangay, di ba? Yung barangay. Uh, ang problema ni barangay, nakatanggap po sila ng uh, nakatanggap po sila ng donasyon galing sa kanilang isang constituent na balikbayan. Galing abroad, binisita si barangay, nakita may kailangan ipaayos sa barangay hall. So nagbigay po siya ng pera doon sa barangay hall or doon sa ating kapitan para ipaayos yung kanilang barangay hall. Okay. Ang tanong ni kapitan, kung gagamitin namin yung perang ibinigay sa amin nung, nung aming isang constituent na to para ipaggawa yung aming barangay hall, dadaan ba ito sa RA 9184? Okay. Dadaan ito sa RA 9184 kung i-consider natin itong procurement. Kung procurement yan, RA 9184 yan. Okay. Ano nga bang procurement? It refers to the acquisition of goods, consulting services, and contracting for infrastructure projects by the procuring entity. Okay. Kaya lang, Medyo, medyo malabo pa yata kung, kung, kung ano to. Procurement nga ba to? Okay. Sa definition, i-underline po natin yung ating tinatawag na acquisition. Yan. I-underline yung acquisition sa inyong mga monitors. Ano ba tong acquisition na to? Pag sinabi natin acquisition or when the procuring entity acquired the goods, consulting services, and contracting infrastructure projects, um, dapat makomply po niya yung dalawang requirement bago siya tawagin acquisition. Ano yun? Number one, yung goods, consulting services o yung project ay manggagaling outside outside po ng government entity. So kung ipapaayos nila yung kalambarang ngayon, saan po ba manggagaling yung uh, materials na gagamit? Yung manggagaling sa hardware. Is that uh, an entity outside the, the organization? Answer yes. That's the requirement. Pero meron pa siyang pangalawang condition. Ano yan? The second requirement is that there should be this disbursement of government funds related to the purchase. So, ibig sabihin, babayaran ni gobyerno okay, yung goods, consulting services, at infra projects na kukunin niya sa labas ng kanyang opisina. So, ibig sabihin, kung ibibigay yung goods at walang babayaran, that's not considered a procurement transaction. So, hindi yan dadaan sa RA, 9184. Pero kung babayaran ni gobyerno yan, that will be considered as RA 9184. That's procurement transaction. Okay, ang problema, teka, sa issue, hindi naman babayaran ni gobyerno. Sabi niya, kasi manggagaling naman yung pera doon sa doon sa, sa private individual. Okay, tama ba yun? Okay, hindi po tama yun. Bakit? Kasi nga po, ibinigay yung pera kay kapitan. So, pag binigay yung pera sa barangay hall kay kapitan, at hinawakan ng kapitan yan, okay, that already becomes government fund. Okay, bakit? Kasi yan po yung tinatawag natin na trust fund. Okay. Perang, uh, perang uh, inentrust sa atin. Pinagkatiwala sa atin. So sabi ko, because the money was already received by the barangay, okay, the money becomes the fund of the barangay. Okay, even if it came from a private entity or private individual. Hence, any goods, services that will be acquired using that particular money to 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 buy, no, to to pay, and that will all that will be considered a procurement transaction. Okay, maliwara po yon ha, yung rule ng procurement. Okay, ano naman yung mga goods? Yan. Bakit natin kailangan malaman kung goods yung ating procurement? Pag sinabi natin goods, we are referring to all items, supplies, materials. General support services, except for those related to consulting and procurement projects, it may be needed in the transaction of anion public businesses or government undertakings such as equipment, furniture, stationery, materials for construction. Okay, for those related to personal and non-personal property or contractual services such as repair and maintenance of equipment and furniture, tracking, hauling, janitorial and security services. Okay, or those related to uh, or analogous services such as list of office space, media advertisement, health maintenance services, other services essential to the operation of the procuring entity. So if your procurement falls in any of these items, o kung binibili mo ay ito, isa sa mga items na to, okay, that would fall under procurement of goods. Minsan may isang MLG sabi niya, may project po kami sir, ano yung project niyo? Repair or rehabilitation of our municipal hall. However, the project is was intended to be implemented by administration. So the procuring entity, the municipio, will be buying the material separately from the labor component. 
Ang tanong niya ngayon, yung kung bibiliin po namin yung mga materials na gagamitin para i-repair yung aming building, okay, will that fall under procurement of goods? What do you think? Yes or no? Pa-type sa chat box natin. Bibiliin yung materials para do sa repair. Will that fall under procurement of goods? Well, the repair is considered an infra project. Okay? The procurement of the material component separately will be falling under procurement of goods. Kasi nakalagay dito, materials for construction. Okay? In contrast, ano naman yung infrastructure projects? Infrastructure projects will refer to construction, improvement, rehabilitation, demolition, repair, restoration, or maintenance of Ayan, mga lighthouse, plants, railways, bridges, airports, okay, water system, okay, um, internet infrastructure, irrigation, o oh, diba, buildings, school buildings, or any projects of the government. So kapag ang project may construction, improvement of these items, then that would fall under infrastructure projects. Okay. And ano naman yung consulting? Consulting services would refer to those services for infrastructure projects and other types of projects or activities requiring adequate external technical professional expertise that are beyond the capacity or capability of the government to undertake, such as advisory and review services, pre-investment or feasibility studies, design, construction supervision, management services, and other technical and or related studies. So, parang specialized po siya. Anong pagkakaiba nito? Um, pag goods and infrastructure projects, the awards of contracts is based on lowest calculated and responsive bidder. So, the price offer is of primary consideration for as long as they are complying with the technical specifications case of goods. The award not sa kanila. However, sa consulting services, the award of contract is based on adequate external technical and professional expertise of the individual rendering the services. Kaya hindi po itong magbabase lamang sa presyo ng bid na i-offer ni bidder, kundi magbabase sa quality ng professional na magkakanak ng service. Kaya nga po, pag i-award natin yung kontrata under consulting services, we should be awarding the contract not to the lowest calculated and responsive bid, but to the highest rated and responsive bidder. So, ibig sabihin, there's a rating activity, no? rating activity that will be used under this type of procurement. Okay, you will, you will get to know more about how to conduct procurement for consulting in the next topics that we're going to have in this training. Yeah. Some concepts, concept, sabi natin, highest rated and responsive bid, saan yan? Binibigay natin yan sa consulting services. Okay? Dapat transparent din yung procurement natin. We are using competitive bidding as our primary mode of procurement. No? Meron tayong mga alternative methods of procurement. Natandaan natin, alternative methods of procurement are used only under highly exceptional case to promote economy and efficiency and justified by compliance with the different conditions uh, provided under the IRR. Yan, yung mga type of procurement natin. Ang, ang procurement natin or during the conduct of bidding process, nagkakandak tayong tinatawag na eligibility checking. We check the legal, technical, and financial capacity of the bidders participating by conducting eligibility checking. And we are using the term also of approved budget for the contract or ABC. Okay, ABC serves as the ceiling, maximum bid offer that a bidder may have in a particular procurement. Kaya dapat dinidispose na sa kanila yan. Okay, so yung evaluation natin in our uh, conduct of procurement is using also the term non-discretionary criteria or non-discretionary past-fail criteria. Okay? Na tinitingnan lang natin based on our requirement, presence or absence of documents, and ganun po yung proseso ang ginagawa natin. And of course, pagdating sa goods and infra, the awards of contract is done to the lowest calculated and responsive bidder. Ayan. Meron din po tayong rules on professionalization of procurement officials. Okay? Alam natin ngayon, in many LGUs, Medyo may mga bago po silang administration. Pag may bagong administration, kadalasan may bagong back member din. Sino po sa inyo ang mga bagong back member? Kaka-appoint lang ng bagong administration. Pakitaas po yung kamay. Ay, wala pala. Hindi na makikita. No? Pakitype na lang or pakiclick na lang yung raise hand button sa ating mga Zoom account para makita natin. Pero iba pa din natin para hindi, uh, para hindi po manatili na kataas yung kanyang kamay. Okay, nakalagi po doon that within six months from your appointment, you'll be required to 
go to a training. And then, of course, meron po siyang penal and civil liabilities. Uh, may mga kaparusahan po pag hindi natin na-comply yung ating procurement policy. Okay, so ito po yung mga methods of procurement na binanggit natin kanina. First, competitive bidding being the general mode of procurement. And then, of course, sabi nga natin, under highly exceptional case to promote economy and efficiency and uh, pag na-comply natin mga conditions prescribed, pwede natin gamitin yung alternative methods. Ano yung mga alternative methods? Lima. Generally, we have limited source bidding, direct contracting, repeat order, shopping, and negotiated procurement. No? The different modes of procurement will be discussed no? in, in, in the next presentations no? in this training para, para baka mamaya tarungin na nyo ang mga yan. Ha? Okay? So mga susunod po na modules, meron pong discussion para sa mga yan. Okay? At ito po yung bidding process natin for goods and infra. Okay, medyo banggitin lang natin pero uh, hindi na natin i-detalya kasi may special topic naman kayo para dyan. Meron tayong pre-procurement conference, pag-advertise tayo for 7 days, pre-bid conference, okay, after 12 days, magsasubmit sila ng bids, we open their technical proposal, kapag pumasa, kompleto yung mga dokumento, we open their financial proposal. Pag hindi pumasa sa so technical proposal, hindi na natin pwedeng buksan yung kanilang financial proposal. Sa mga pumasa sa financial proposal, irarank natin sila, i-evaluate natin sila, and then we conduct post-qualification to the lowest calculated bidder or the highest rated bidder. Okay? Kapag pumasa sa post-qualification, the back will now recommend award of contract. Ayan. Ito naman sa consulting services. Alos pareho lang din sila. Pagkakaiba lang po yung, yung bid submission at yung opening of bids. Okay. Kasi nga po, meron tayong, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na rating process. Tawag natin yung shortlisting. Yan. Nagkaganda tayo na shortlisting sa kanilang eligibility documents. And only those included na shortlist are allowed to participate in the private conference and to submit their bids. Pag submit nila kanilang bids, it's not enough that the documents are complete. We'll also be rating based on the method identified in a bidding document. It could either be QBE or QCBE. QBE stands for quality-based evaluation. QCBE stands for quality-cost-based evaluation. Okay? Kung sino yung uh, after, after the opening, evaluate natin. Kung sino yung highest rated bidder natin, sila po yung eh, makikipag-negotiate tayo tapos mag-conduct po tayo ng post-qualification and finally recommend our award of contract. Okay? I repeat, baka may, may separate discussion po tayo para dyan. No? So, uh, dun, ididetalya po nila kung paano po ginagawa yung bawat stages ng ating bidding process. Okay, let's go now to the scope and coverages no? ng ating uh, RA9184 and its 2016 IRR. And it covers all procuring entities, no? kasama ang local government units. Si Barangay hindi po siya exempted. Si SK hindi rin po siya exempted. So from the SK barangay level up to the provincial level in case of local government units are covered po ng ating policy. Okay? Maliwanag po yun? Okay, maliwanag. It is also applicable to treaty international executive agreement. No? If the agreement do not provide that other rules will be used in the conduct of the procurement. Okay? Uh, the competitive bidding procedure, the processes that will be adopting will also be applicable for foreign funded projects. Okay, in case, except when okay, there is conflict of terms between the treaty, international executive agreement, uh, over our procurement policy. It will be the agreement that will prevail. Or if a different rule or method of procurement is adopted no, uh, in the agreement, okay, our government therefore shall ensure that the reasons are clearly stated in the records of discussion uh, for the use of that uh, other rule no, other than other than our RA918. So, covered po tayo no, sa ating LGU pag that is RA918. Okay, meron bang mga exempted transaction okay, na, na hindi na kailangang dumaan sa RA918? Meron po. Ano yun? Pag yung pondo na gagamitin natin ay nanggaling sa foreign grant. Bakit? Because uh, implementation of pro projects under foreign grant is covered the Republic Act number 8182 as amended by Republic Act 8555. Okay, kapag ang LGU ay bibili ng real property, bibili po kayo ng lupa, 
na siya yung patatayuan ng proyekto ninyo, yung pagbili po ng lupa ay hindi rin covered ng RA 9184 because it is governed by Republica 10752. Pero yung pagkoconstruct doon sa building, covered na po yun ng RA 9184. Okay? Pag may mga proyekto po tayo na itatayo under public-private procurement no? partnership, yan ang tawag natin PPP agreement or BOT, Build to Operate Transfer Policy, Okay, bakit? Kasi yan po ay covered ng Republic Act 6957 as amended by 7718. Okay? The following transactions will not also be governed by RA 9184 because they are not considered as procurement undertakings. Ano yun? Direct financial or material assistance given to beneficiaries. Example, uh, merong lumapit na may sakit sa LGU natin at humihingi ng financial assistance para sa kanyang hospitalization. Yung ating local sick executive naman ay nagbigay ng pera sa kanya para maibili niya ng mga medicines as financial assistance no nakasama po sa program ng ating LGU. Yung pera po na ibibigay ay hindi natin sa subject sa RA 9184. Bakit? Kasi hindi naman natin pinapabili yung pera. Tama? Okay. Second, if you are participating to both local and foreign scholarships, trainings, uh, continuing education conferences and seminars, hindi po yan over ng RA 9184. Imagine mo na lang, no? you are attending a training or a seminar. Pag-arrive mo doon, pagdating mo doon, okay, sabi nung participant, eh, teka po, sabi nung accountant namin, cover daw to ng RA9184 at magdi-distribute po muna ako ng tatlong canvas bago ako mag-register. Tama? Anong nangyari sa'yo, di ba? Okay, so hindi po yan cover nung pag sumali ka po sa scholarship, nag-training ka, continuing education, conferences, seminars, hindi po yan govern ng RA9184. Hiring of job order workers, as of the moment, ah, as of the moment, is not yet covered by RA 9184. Bakit as of the moment? Okay, because just recently, the COA, the DBM, and the civil services issued a joint circular saying that hiring job order workers and contract of service will now be covered by RA 9184. That's a joint resolution. However. The joint resolution is suspended until December 31, 2022. Ah, okay. So, baka hanggang December 31, 2022 na lang. If, if hindi po po extended. That in-extend po yan ang in-extend. Okay? Joint venture or GOCC and private entities and joint ventures of LGUs with private entities will not also be covered by RA 9184. Disposal of property and other government non-unserviceable assets. It's not also covered by RA 9184. So kapag magbibenta ka ng lumang sasakyan ng gobyerno o ng ahensya nyo, hindi po yan dadaan ng Bits and Awards Committee or Phil Jeps. Maraming tumatawag na ganyan eh. And of course, a list of real property for private use. Halimbawa, may property po si government, tapos re-rentahan po ng isang pribadong institusyon yung ating property para sa kanyang private intention, private use. Okay, hindi po yan dadaan sa RA 9184. So, tanda natin, hindi po lahat ng activity ng ating government ay covered ng RA 9184. So, may mga exemptions po siya. So, tingnan na lang po natin kung related po dito sa mga activities na ito, yung procurement natin, eh, pwede natin sabihin na hindi po yan dadaan sa RA 9184. Clear? Okay, pakitype naman po ang clear sa ating chat box kung maliwanag pa rin po ang dating po sa inyo. Yan, very good. Okay, ma'am, knowledge check po tayo. Yes, sir. So our third knowledge check, uh, we will again select the answer via the Zoom polling feature. Our FT live viewers may also type in their answer via the chat box in Facebook. So may we ask our technical assistant to please flash the question? The question is, procurement refers to the acquisition of A, goods and infrastructure projects, B, goods, infrastructure projects and consulting services, C, goods, infrastructure projects, consulting services, and lease of goods and real estate, or D, none of the above. Again, procurement refers to the acquisition of A, goods and infrastructure projects, B, goods, infrastructure projects and consulting services, C, goods, infrastructure 
consulting services, and lease of goods and real estate, or D, none of the above. So, ayan. Medyo nalilito po yung mga participants natin dito sa question. Most of, medyo hati po sila sa letter B and letter C. So, uh, we will be closing the poll feature po in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So, ayun sir, medyo hati po sila sa answers nila. Pero most 51% po is letter C and 46% is letter B. Ayan. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, of course, thank you sa mga sumagot. No? Tingnan natin ano bang tamang sagot dito. No? Ang correct answer po natin dito is letter C. Letter C po. No? Bakit? It covers goods, intro project, consulting services, and list of properties. Although covered din naman ng goods infra and consulting no pero mas okay mas malapit po kasi no mas tama po kasi yung letter C del sinama po doon yung list of uh, properties and real estate. Ayun, in general, thank you. Nakamit po kay ma'am. Ayun. So mga participants po, please take note of the uh, correct answer para well-guided po tayo. So now we will continue po yung ating discussion. Okay, moving on. Uh, Tuloy natin ang ating discussion. Kumusta po kayo so far? Are you okay? Kung okay po kayo, pag-type yung okay sa ating chat box. Type okay sa ating chat box kung okay pa po kayo. Ayan. Ayan. So let's talk about the responsibilities of every individual playing the roles in the procurement. Ayan. Sino sino nga ba yung mga actors natin pagdating sa ating procurement? So nandiyan po si umpisa po natin kay end user. Ayan. Nakikita si end user. Ganda ganda niya. Ayan. Pero minsan problema yan. No? Si end user minsan problema sa procurement yan. Okay, nandiyan din po si Technical Working Group or TWG. Ayan. Nandiyan din po yung ating box secretariat. Okay, nandiyan po yung ating head of procuring entity. Siyempre, sa likod ng ating head of procuring entity ay yung kanyang box. Ayan, sa likod po niya yung kanyang box. And finally, nandiyan po yung ating observers. Okay, tingnan po natin. Ano po ba ang responsibilidad ng bawat isa? Okay, umpisa po natin sa... Man, knowledge, knowledge check ulit tayo, ma'am. We will continue po with the uh, uh, discussion, sir. Okay. Okay, umpisan po natin kay Head of Procuring Entity. Sino nga ba si Head of Procuring Entity? Kung ikaw ay nasa LGU, yan, munisipyo, okay, um, province, city, yan. Ang, ang Head of Procuring Entity mo po ay si Local Chief Executive. Sa munisipyo, yan po si mayor. Okay, sa city, city mayor. Siyempre sa province, yan po ay si governor. Okay? Pag ikaw ay national, national government agency, siya po yung head ng agency mo. Pwedeng director yan, pwedeng secretary. Okay? Kapag ikaw po ay nasa government owned and controlled corporation or GOCC, or member ka po ng state universities and colleges, yan, or SUCs, okay, yung 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 inyo pong uh, head of procuring entity ay yung inyong governing board, board of directors or board of regents. Yan, nakita mo, parang tapang-tapang ng local chief executive. O ba? Ano ang kanyang function? Ano nga bang trabaho niya? Number one, trabaho po niya mag-establish ng kanyang bids and awards committee. Okay, and designate its members. So siya po yung nag-identify 
kung sino po yung magiging ho, uh, head of pro, uh, kung sino po yung magiging beats and awards committee ng kanyang organization. Okay, siya na rin po magde-designate kung sino sa kanila magiging chairman at kung sa kanila sino magiging vice chairman. Okay? The head of procuring entity is also responsible in ensuring professionalization of the Bits and Awards Committee, its secretariat, and the TWG members. Okay? Siya din po ang nag approve ng ating annual procurement plan, nag approve or nag-disapprove ng, ng award of contract, at siya rin po ay nagre-resolve ng protest kung meron. He's also responsible in resolving protest if any. Okay? Okay. Ang tanong natin, halimbawa, yung ating mayor po ay pumunta sa ibang bansa. Ayan. Pumunta po siya ng isang bang, ibang, inibang bansa. Nagtalaga po sila ng officer in charge ng ating, ng ating LGU. Ang tanong ngayon, meron po bang kapangyarihan yung ating officer in charge to approve or disapprove recommendation of the Bits and Awards Committee? Okay. Ang sagot po dyan, nakatams up, ibig sabihin, yes. Okay. Meron po siyang meron po siyang kapangyarihan to approve or disapprove recommendation of the Bits and Awards Committee. That's based on NPM number 102, that's 2014. Okay. Yan. Mapunta naman tayo sa Bits and Awards Committee. Ayan. As a general rule, there must be a single back of a procuring entity in order for them to be to be uh, conducting procurement transactions. Para makapag-conduct po ng procurement, kailangan at least meron po sila isang back. Okay, kung wala pong Bits and Awards Committee or walang kakaya ng makabuo ng Bits and Awards Committee, eh, hindi po sila makakapag-conduct ng procurement. Okay, kung marami naman po tayong mga procurement transactions, okay, o kaya meron tayong mga specialized procurement transactions, o kaya meron tayong agreement requiring us to create a separate back from our from our back, no, from our existing back. Eh pwede po tayong mag-create ng separate Bits and Awards Committee. Okay? Kapag marami trabaho, ibig sabihin of the volume because of the volume of the procurement transactions uh, so that the, the single back cannot be able to cater all this procurement anymore, then we can create a separate bids and awards committee. Ayan. So, sino po yung mga hindi pwedeng maging membro ng bids and awards committee? Okay? Ayan. Para malaman po natin, baka mamaya meron dito naging member ng back mamay pala. Siyempre, umpisa po natin kay head of procuring entity. But I hope is not allowed to become members of the BAC simply because uh, there has to be a segregation of function, check and balance. Tama? Number two, any other officials other than the hope approving uh, procurement contracts is not also allowed to become BAC member. Kaya halimbawa, absent si hope or nakalip si hope o kaya nag-abroad si hope, uh, yung itatalagang officer in charge cannot also become member of the Bits and Awards Committee. Okay? Internal auditors are not also allowed to become back members. Ayan. Para magkaroon po ng independence, no? Yung ating internal auditors. Okay? Yung bago po natin na policy ngayon, as provided by the Department of Finance, the local treasurer and the assistant local treasurer cannot also become member of the Bits and Awards Committee. Okay? Okay, maliwanag po yan, I hope. And then, finally, the chief accountant or the head of the provincial city or municipal accounting office, including its staff, cannot also become members of the Bits and Awards Committee. Now, that is due to a re re circular, memorandum circular issued by issued by the Commission on Audit. Yan. So, hindi po pwede si accountant o head ng uh, province, provincial city or municipal accounting office including its staff. Is there any possible way that the accounting staff could become a member of the BAC? Ang sagot, merong isa lang. And what is that? When uh, they are acting as an end-user representative because the procurement being undertaken will be used by their office. Pwede po yun, yung exemption to sa rule natin. Okay? Ano naman ang ang sino-sino ang pwede maging members ng BAC? Para, para kay Para kay national government agencies, kay GFIs, kay SUCs, yan. Okay, ang member ng BAC, regular BAC members natin, may, uh, meron po tayong dalawang klase ng membership. Eh. First, meron po tayong tinatawag na regular members. The regular members are those members of the BAC that would include the chairperson, the chairman of the BAC. Okay, members coming from the legal or administrative areas, finance, 
uh, including the provisional members. So, meron din tayong tinatawag na provisional members. Okay? So, anong pagkakaiba ng regular member at ng provisional member? The regular member will have a fixed term of one year. So, one year yung fixed term ng regular member. Eh, yung provisional member, yung yung membership ni provisional member uh, will depend on the type of procurement to be undertaken. Because the provisional members are members coming from, number one, officer with technical expertise, and number two, end-user representative. Ibig sabihin nito, kapag alimbawa bibili ang, ang agency, ang MLGU ng IT equipment, eh, yung mga back members nila ay hindi naman po ganun ka-expert sa pagdating sa IT, pwede po silang kumuha ng isang IT expert for as long as they are permanent employee okay doon sa kanilang opis sa, sa kanilang LGU to sit as a provisional member bakit provisional member kasi uuupo lang siya as back member while the bidding for the IT equipment is being conducted pagkatapos po ng bidding for bidding for the IT equipment aalis na rin po siya as back member yan kaya siya tinawag na provisional member ano naman yung end user representative? Halimbawa, si si Menro ay hindi kasama ng ating uh, in charge sa environment, sa ating LGU ay hindi kasama sa regular member. Ngayon ang bibili nila ay project na na pinapabili ng ating um Envi office, environmental office. Okay, tulad ng seedlings para sa kanilang greening program. Okay? So dahil sila ang end user kukuha po tayo sa kanila ng isang provisional member para uupo sa back bids and awards committee natin habang binibili yung seedlings na pinapabili ng kanyang office. So after the procurement of the seedlings, aalis na naman siya or aalis na siya sa bids and awards committee. Papalit naman yung ibang end user representatives. Okay? So yun po yung pagkakaiba ng regular member at ng provisional member. Okay, sa LGUs, Okay, any representative from regular offices under the office of the local chief executive can become a member of the bank. Okay, syempre, sasama rin natin si end user representative. Si barangay, barangay naman, kung, kung yung mga barangay natin sa ating mga LGUs, ang member naman ng bank niya ay manggagaling lang doon sa members ng sangguniang barangay. Okay, pero hindi po kasama si punong barangay. Kasi si punong barangay will act as the Head of Procuring Entity. Remember, the hope it cannot become member of the Bids and Awards Committee. Okay? Clear? Clear. No? Ayan. Pwede bang mag-create ng alternate back member? Anong alternate? Pag absent yung principal, ang papalit ay yung alternate. Ang sagot po dyan ay yes. Uh, to, to ensure continuity of the, of the procurement and not to incur any delay in the implementation of programs of the government, The procuring entity is allowed to appoint an alternate back member of the principal. So ang rule is, kapag wala yung principal, si alternate ang, 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 ang sasali sa mga meetings. Okay, yung present, nung alternate na to in back meetings, is considered for the purposes of quorum. Okay? The relationship of the principal and the alternate is of co-equal in nature rather than hierarchical. So co-equal, pareho po sila ng rights obligations, responsibilities, incentive benefits. Accountability of the alternate, however, shall only be limited to their respective acts and decisions. And they will have the same term as the original member. Pareho lang po sila ng term na one year. O one year po yung term na binigay sa kanila. Okay? Clear? Alternate members? May nagtanong. Sabi niya, entitled din po ba ng honoraria yung alternate back member? Ang sagot? Yes. Kasi kasama ang benefits no uh, ng alternate ay uh, um, entitled din po sa benefits na nare-receive ng isang regular member. Okay? Okay, ano ngayon ang functions ng ating Bids and Awards Committee? Okay, kung kawin back member, ito po yung functions mo. Number one, recommend approval and or revision of the APP and other reports. Yan, kasi... Bukas yung activity niyo ay planning, mapapag-aralan po niya yan. Okay, second, to conduct bidding process. So siya po yung nakakandak ng competitive bidding or siya rin po yung nakakandak ng alternative procurement. Okay, recommend award to the hope no? uh, or his duly authorized representative. 
So, siya rin po ang nagre-recommend ng award of funding. So, the hope therefore, do not have any, do not have an authority to identify uh, the winning bidder. No? Wala po siyang kapangyarihan na ganun. Ang functions po na yon ay nakatuon sa ating bids and awards committee. Okay? Uh, he's also responsible in recommending to the hope or his duly authorized representative the imposition of sanctions, conduct periodic assessment of procurement process and procedures, and creation of technical working group. Okay? Kung ang back member, yan po yung mga responsibilidad natin. Na mapunta naman tayo doon sa ating back secretariat. Nang sino po dito yung mga members ng back secretariat? Pakitaas po yung inyong mga kamay. Or pakitay po ang number one sa ating chat box para malaman natin kung may mga back secretariat ba na sumali ngayon sa training natin. Okay? Okay. So, ang rule natin sa back secretariat is that The back secretariat composition do not have any minimum or maximum. We can tell our local chief executive, no sir. Okay, hindi po hindi po kailangan na isa, dalawa, tatlo lang ang back secretariat. No, pwede pong more than that, kasi wala nang pong maximum. Wala na rin pong minimum, so kung isa lang ang makiri, eh, yun ang problema. Okay. However, the hope may create a procurement unit to act as back secretary. Yung matipong Uh, meron pong isang unit or section sa ating LGU na ang functions nila ay back secretariat at yun lang po yung ginagawa nila as part of their functions. Pwede po yan. Possible po yan under our guidelines. But if the LGU do not have the capacity to create positions for that procurement unit, okay, the head, okay, the, the back secretariat uh, may come from various, okay, the, the back secretariat members may come from Various Department of the LGU. Ang tawag po natin doon ay ad hoc, ad hoc back secretariat. Okay, meron ba tayong requirements sa kanilang mga appointment? Meron. Okay, at least to the head. Okay, the head of the back secretariat should at least equip occupying fifth or third ranking permanent position or if not available, the next, occupying the next lower rank. Ayan. So ang rule natin, yung head ng back secretariat dapat permanent. Okay, could either be a third ranking for LGU, third ranking dapat siya, at least department head ang rule, or ang kanyang position, or if that is not available, the next lower rank available. Yan. So, yun po yung pwede natin i-create na back secretariat. No? The head must be a permanent employee. Ang next question is, how about the members? Are the members required to be a permanent employee of the LGU? Answer, no. Hindi naman po. Only the head of back secretariat is required to become a permanent employee. Functions, nami. Provide administrative support to the back and TWG. Provide, um, prepare minutes of meetings. Take custody of procurement records. Manage the sale of bidding documents. Advertise opportunities, including awards of contract. Assist in the management of the procurement process. Monitor procurement activities and milestones, consolidate PPMPs and prepare APPs, and act as central channels of communication. Yan po yung trabaho ni Bak Sekretariat. Ang dami-dami. Dami-dami yung trabaho. So, we must make it a point that the Bak Sekretariat should be at least, number one, knowledgeable in preparing minutes. Ano siya magsulat? No? Number two, marunong siya pagdating sa IT kasama ang publication sa kanya. Okay. Number three, meron tayong back secretariat na marunong mag-keep ng records. Document. Tama? Okay. At siyempre, dapat yung back secretariat din natin ay malakas. Okay. Physically fit. Bakit? Imagine mo, yung back secretariat minsan pinagbubuhat ng karton, di ba? Ng mga bidding document. No? Ano yan? Uh, kumukuha ng merienda pagdating ng mga back meeting. So, yun po yung mga skills, no? Uh, set, or skill requirements ng ating mga back secretariat. Okay? So, sabihin natin sa ating local chief executive, so, patagdag naman po ng back secretariat dahil nag-iisa lang yung inapoy. Ha? So, hindi po kailangan na iisa. Pwede po marami yan. Okay? Clear? Type clear sa ating chat box kung clear pa rin po ang dating namin sa inyo. So, check lang po kung nandyan pa kayo. Okay, now let's go to the technical working group. Uh, technical working group uh, or TWG. Sino sila? Technical working group are people coming from the technical, legal, and financial okay, uh, areas ng ating LGUs no? because they will be considered as technical experts, legal experts, and financial experts. So, meaning, 
na TWG is a pool of <clears throat> pool of experts. Nandiyan po yung mga eksperto natin. Anong magiging role nila? Ang role nila is assisting function lang. No? They are, they are uh, responsible of providing assistance to the Bids and Awards Committee with respect to the review of technical specifications, scope of work, and terms of reference, shortlisting of consultants, reviewing the content of the bidding document, and evaluation of the bid, no? Uh, evaluation of the bid submitted by the by the bidders. So, yan po yung kanilang magiging role no? as technical working group. Yan. Meron na po ba tayong technical working group sa ating mga office? Type yes. Kung meron, yan. Nagtatrabaho po ba sila? Type yes. Kung nagtatrabaho sila, no kapag hindi. Pag hindi po sila nagtatrabaho, at sila ay member ng TWG, ang tawag po sa kanila, taong walang ginagawa. Ayan. O joke lang po yun ha, baka may masaktan dyan. No? Okay, taong walang, TWG pa rin naman, kaya ng taong walang ginagawa. Okay, so yan po si technical working group. At syempre, mapunta naman tayo kay end users. Si end user actually may not be playing a role in the actual procurement process except when they are becoming a provisional member. Pero actually, importante yung role nila kasi sila po yung umpisa at end ng procurement. So they are considered the beginning and the end of the procurement. Bakit? Because number one, they are the one preparing purchase requests, preparing actual requirements for the project, preparing PPMPs, preparing specifications, preparing program of work, identifying the ABC, yeah, dami-dami nang ginagawa, no? And basically, yun yung nagiging basis ng ating bids and awards committee pagdating sa bidding procedure. Okay. However, after the bidding procedure, pag i-deliver na rin yung mga products na, na natapos nating pinabid, they will also be in charge in accepting accepting those items kasi sila po yung gagamit. Tama? Okay, most of the time, they are setting the rules in the preparation in the beginning of the procurement. And they will also be the one identifying compliance of the deliveries from the rules or requirements they've identified you know, during the uh, start of the procurement. So, very important po yung role nila. In some instances nga po, dito sa aming lugar, sila po yung may problema. Nagkakaproblema po sila pagdating sa mga specifications, pagdating sa ABC, at siyempre pagdating sa uh, pag-deliver ng mga products. Okay? Ayan, ma'am. Nalish po tayo. Thank you, sir. So at this point, we will be having our fourth knowledge check. So uh, we are feeling generous to our participants. So we will be giving a special token for this question. So th the first participant who will answer the question correctly will be given a special prize. So may we ask our participants to type in their questions to the Zoom, I, I mean to the answer to the Zoom chat box. So the first participant who answered the question correctly will be given a prize. So ayun po. So our question is, internal auditors are proposed prohibited members of the A. BAC, B. BAC Secretariat, C. Technical Working Group, or D. All of the above. Internal auditors are prohibited members of the A. BAC, B. BAC Secretariat, C. Technical Working Group, or D. All of the above. So our technical team boys verifying who answered the question correctly. So before announcing the winner po, may we ask Sir Villon the correct answer for this question. Thank you, Ma'am Janelle. Congratulations sa mananalo. Ayan, ano bang price natin, Ma'am Janelle? How sell that ba yan? Online. Surprise. Online. <laughs> okay. okay. Congratulations, no? Ang tamang sagot po natin is letter D, all of the above. No? So, hindi po pwede maging member yung internal auditor natin sa BAC, BAC Secretariat, TWG. 
in order to maintain independence dun sa lahat ng procurement transactions natin sa ating LGU. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So, our technical team po is verifying the first to answer the question correctly. So, I will announce na lang po within uh, our training period. So, now we will continue po with our lecture. Okay, we go to our last topic no, for our first module, the legal indemnification packages for bids and awards committee. I know that many procuring entities, especially the bids and awards committee, are quite diba, anxious. Minsan, kasi kapag may nagko-complain na bidder, diba, pwede silang ma-demanda, no? pwede silang ma uh, makasuhan. No? Yun yung question nila. Ano naman ang tulong na pwedeng ibigay sa amin? ng RA 9184 para at least maibsan man lang yung takot namin kapag kami ay na-appoint na back member. Okay, sa ating IRR po, meron po siyang tinatawag na legal indemnification packages para sa ating bids and awards committee. So ano po yung mga legal indemnification packages? No? This refers to the assistance or remuneration given to the members of the back and or to the back support staff for any loss, damage or injury caused by them or to them by reason of the lawful performance of their duty. No, ginawa mo lang naman yung role mo eh. Ginawa mo naman yung tama according to the rules. Pero syempre, dahil meron kang disqualify na bidder, nasaktan siya, nag-file siya ng complaint against you. Okay, paano mo nang pro-protectahan yung sarili mo? Ito po, may indemnification packages po tayo. Ano yun? Number one, free legal assistance. Okay, discuss natin mamaya yan. Okay? Number two, Pwede rin po tayong makakuha ng liability insurance. And of course, eh, pagka nagkakaalta presyon tayo dahil sa procurement na ginagawa natin, uh, pwede rin po tayong mabigyan ng tinatawag na free medical assistance. Okay? Now, ano yung free legal assistance na pwede natin ma 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 makuha? Number one, indemnification ito. That this, will, this will indemnify you of the losses that you have ahead due to the unlawful complaints no, filed against you. Okay, pag sinabi natin kasi indemnify, ah, para lang maibsan yung maibsan po yung yung hirap na nadara na, 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 naranasan natin during that time na binibigyan tayo. Okay? So, if you're uh, filed a complaint, ang gagawin po natin is to engage the services of private lawyers. So, kukuha po tayo ng pri private lawyer or external counsel to represent us in the case. Okay, and we can only be entitled to the benefit if we have been a judge as uh, uh, as not guilty, uh, not guilty, okay, of gross negligence, misconduct, or grave abuse of discretion. So, dapat ang ang verdict sa atin ng korte after the complaint ay hindi po tayo guilty do dun sa ikinaso sa atin para makatanggap tayo ng free legal assistance. Because kapag ka clear na guilty tayo, wala pong legal assistance na bibigay sa atin si government. Okay, the legal assistance shall also cover those actual costs and fees with maximum of 5,000 pesos per appearance ng lawyer. Okay, shall not cover any action or suit initiated in, 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 in personal capacity and initiated by the government against the concern, back member or staff. And finally, we are entitled to actual moral and exemplary damages. Yan. So, ang problema lang natin sa legal assistance ay hihintayin natin na ma-adjudge tayo to be not guilty muna. So, tatapusin muna natin yung kaso bago tayo makareceive ng in incentive. So, parang reimbursement lang siya nung nagastos natin. Pero, syempre, gagastos pa rin tayo at walang assurance na maibabalik sa atin. Di ba? Okay. So, mas maganda nang walang nadidimanda. Okay? Ano naman yung liability insurance? Now, the procuring entity shall have the responsibility also to procure the and maintain adequate liability insurance for or in behalf of its bids and awards members and back support staff. Okay, the liability insurance policy shall cover only those liabilities asserted against a public official and incurred by him in his capacity as such back member or back support staff in the as the case may be. Yan. And the insurer shall pay the losses arising from the claim or suit against the back members or back support staff during the policy period wherein they serve 
in such capacity. So parang kukuha po tayo ng liability insurance policy sa isang private insurance company para sa ating mga bids and awards committee. Okay, clear. So yun ang liability insurance natin. Okay, in the event of settlement or compromise or indemnification shall be confined only okay, to, mat uh, to matters covered by the settlement and to which the procuring entity had been advised by counsel that the person to be identified have not committed gross negligence, misconduct, or grave abuse of, the, of discretion in the performance of its function. So, kailangan dapat may lumabas, no? The verdict na hindi ka po uh, nag-commit ng negligence, kapabayaan, misconduct, and any other uh, acts, no? Grave abuse of discretion in the performance of your function. Okay? The procurement of liability insurance shall also be subject um, subject to the setting of schedules of premiums by the GPPB. Pero sad to say, parang ngayon na wala pang lumalabas. So in the future, may lalabas po ng kanyang guideline. No? Kung magkano po ang pwedeng bayaran na premium para sa liability insurance ng back members and its um, support system. Okay. And third, medical assistance. Yan. Maraming may high blood. Eh. Okay. Tumasang blood pressure. Medical assistance shall also be provided to back members and back support staff for injuries, disabilities incurred in the local performance of their function. Mga ba, nagbabit kayo, nagbibit, nagkakanak kayo ng bidding, then suddenly biglang tumakas ang blood pressure mo, then nagagalit ka during bidding. No? In that case, pwede ka pong pakahingi ng medical assistance. The claimant, however, shall be required to, shall only be entitled to that indemnification for injury or disability resulting from performance of their functions are provided by law and without any contributory negligence on their part. So, dapat in the performance of your, your functions lagi. No? The claimant must notify the head of procuring entity within seven calendar days from the occurrence of the injury or disability. So, merong information requirement. Okay? So, pag na-comply nyo lahat yan, okay, that will be, uh, you can be entitled to our medical assistance. Okay? The medical assistance provided shall also consist of Medicines, lab, hospitalization expenses, provided that the amount claimed shall not exceed the actual amount incurred, uh, substantiated by receipts and other supporting documents. So, masasamit ka ng mga dokumento. Ano? The identification shall only be made upon presentation of the proof of payment in connection with the injury or disability suffered, and the medical assistance granted herein shall be granted to the claimant as a matter of right and subject to conditions mandated by law. So, meron mo tayong legal, um, legal basis for the grant of this. Okay? So, I think that's the last slide for our first module. Ayan. Yes, sir. I would like to announce first yung ating knowledge check winner kanina. So, our winner is from MLGU Alcoy, Ms. Gracie Marie Villarwell. So, congratulations. Uh, we selected for the participants with correct answer and correct, correct name format. So, please note that your name in Zoom must be properly uh, identified. Your MLGU name underscore your full name. So, we can properly identify you during our training. So, please check your email or chat box as our event secretariat will coordinate with you on how you may claim your special prize. So for our next KC knowledge check, may we ask our participants to again select their answer via the Zoom polling feature. Our question is, Back Secretariat performing attendant functions in addition to their regular duties and functions may be paid honoraria at the same rate as the TWG chair and members? Is it A, true, or B, false? Back secretariat performing attendant functions in addition to their regular duties and functions may be paid honoraria at the same rate as the TWG chair and members. Is it true or false? Please select your answer for in our Zoom polling feature. 
We will be closing mm -hmm. the poll feature in five, four, three, two, and one. So most of our participants answered true. Yes, sir. Thank you, yes. Thank you Ma'am Janelle. Opo. Uh, nakita na po naman natin kanina doon sa ating slide. Okay. Kapag sinabi natin attendant function, ang ibig sabihin po niyan, uh, their uh, function as a back secretary that is over and above no kanilang regular function. Because that is an additional function, they are entitled to honoraria. Yan. So, ang tamang sagot po dyan is true. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So, um, may we ask, uh, can we proceed na po with the open forum or mag-break muna tayo, sir? Ma'am Janelle, I think we can proceed with the open forum. So, may I ask the secretariat po? to please uh, flash the first question for this topic. Our first question po, if the chief accountant was assigned to and performing functions of another office and there is an OIC accountant, can the former become a regular member? Uh, okay, so that's a, a very good question. Ano? Um, if the chief accountant was assigned as an officer in charge no, or given other functions other than the function of an accountant, at hindi na rin po siya nag act ng role as an accountant kasi meron kayong officer in charge. Okay, while performing other works other than an accountant, eh, and pwede po siyang maging member ng Bids and Awards Committee natin. Okay, kaya lang, medyo may issue po po dyan kasi according to civil service rules, may mga period, may mga limitations po as to the number of months na pwede lang po siyang mag-perform uh, ng other functions other than his role as uh, the chief accountant of your office. So siguro within that period na hindi po siya naging uh, nag act na accountant ng inyong opisina, pwede po siya maging member ng, ng ating Bits and Awards Committee. Thank you, sir. So for our next question, please. May guidelines po about selection ng back members, especially sa rank ng official. Paano po ito ang agency, 1 to 2 lang ang official na nasa rank. Okay lang po ba na lagi sila ang member yearly kasi the rest ay nasa rank and file na? Okay. Uh, ang meron lang po tayong policy no, with regard to rank. No, with regard to rank is the back chairman. Okay. The, the, the back chairman to be designated by the head of procuring entity for LGUs must be occupying a third ranking position. Okay, wala pong limit as to the number of years na pwede po siyang ma-renew as back member. Well, the well the designation will only be valid for one year. Okay? Uh, the said designation can be renewed by the local chief executive as many as possible no until such time na siguro ayaw na siyang maging member ng back. Okay, but for the rest of the members, uh, wala na pong rank specific sa mga yon so they can become members of the back already. So we hope that is clear po, no? So for the next question. For question number three, can the municipal accountant become a member of the technical working group? Okay, if we will read COA Memorandum Circular 2003-4, ang nakalagay po doon ay bawal lang po siyang maging member ng Bids and Awards Committee. Okay, so in that case, no, wala pong uh, prohibition 
na maging member ng TWG or box secretary at si municipal accountant. So, pwede po yun siyang i-appoint as member ng inyong technical working group as a financial expert. So, I believe that is our last question. Meron pa po ba tayong pahabol? Sir, is it okay po to entertain another question in the chat box? Sige po, ma'am. Um, from MLGU Gigakit, Mr. Gerson Jabay, is it necessary that the amount of ABC should be the same in the APP of a particular project? Okay, Sir Gerson, no, hindi naman po. Okay, kasi remember the APP is a product of a planning activity. No? Prior to publishing our opportunity, the Bids and Awards Committee and the Technical Working Group can still conduct a market study to determine how much really is the market price of the pro of the activity or the product to be procured or project to be to be procured by the by the agency. Now, if the market study prior to publication showed that the uh, market price you know, of the product is lower than the amount provided in the APP. The procuring entity can still publish a lower ABC compared to the ABC provided in the APP. However, if the ABC or if the amount no, um, generated from this study tend to be more than the amount provided in the APP, the procuring entity cannot yet publish the opportunity because first they will have to amend their APP prior to any um, publication or proceeding to their procurement activity. So, yun po. So, pwede pong mas mababa siya. Okay? Pero kung mas mataas, kailangan po natin i-amend muna yung APP natin. And that concludes our open forum. Please note that some questions were not included in the open forum may be discussed and raised in the succeeding days and is not covered by today's topic. So at this point, we will be having a short break. So please be back after five minutes.
Hi, everyone. So before we proceed to the second half of our program, we would like to announce that we are giving special tokens to our two early bird participants starting today until Friday. So we will announce by tomorrow the early birds for day one. So they are the ones who log in early to our Zoom. So also please check your email as our event secretary shall coordinate with the winners on how you may claim your special tokens. So we welcome again our resource speaker for session two of our program, Mr. Reynaldo Velon. He will be discussing the topic on efficient procurement measures, simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports, procurement updates, policies, and innovations. Okay, welcome back to our second topic no, for this morning. Our next topic will be the discussion on the efficient procurement measures, simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports, procurement updates, policies and innovations no, initiated by the Government Procurement Policy Board. Yeah, parang updates po ito ng no, mga issuances natin no, dito sa ating uh, uh, Government Procurement Reform Act. And our module, module objectives for this topic will be the following. No, we are expected to acquire knowledge on the efficient procurement measures amidst calamity and community quarantine through GPPB resolution number 9, 2020. So we'll be providing you uh, the different uh, actions, processes that our LGU may adopt in cases when there are declaration of state of calamity, at ito, pataas naman na naman yung ating cases ng COVID. Kapag ka nagkaroon tayo ng mga declarations na naman, yung mga lockdowns or higher restrictions due to COVID-19. We are also uh, expected to, apprise, to be apprised of the simplified posting and submission of procurement reports and uh, be updated you know, of the latest policies and innovations on government procurement reform. So ang ating magiging... Outline for discussion will be the following. Number one, efficient procurement measures during state of calamity or implementation of community quarantine. The simplified posting of electronic submission of procurement reports. And then after that, we'll be discussing the procurement updates, no policies and innovations, accountability and transparency in government procurement. And finally, the shift to digital platforms, katulad ng ginagawa natin ng online, online uh, trainings. And so once again, sit back, relax, and enjoy our next topic. Again, if you have any questions or issues, no, simply type them in our chat box no, uh, para masagot natin ulit during the open forum. Okay, so let's go to the efficient measures. Um, kapag merong declaration ng state of calamity or implementation of higher restrictions due to community quarantine or due to COVID-19, what are the different actions that should be conducted by the procuring entity. And, uh, the GPPB has issued resolution number 9, that's 2020, kakaumpisa pa lang po nung ating, nung ating COVID-19, to provide guidance and procedures for the efficient conduct of all procurement activities regardless of procurement modality no, during a nationally or locally declared state of calamity yan, where movement of people and mass public or private transports are are limited. So, ito po yung pwedeng gawin ni procuring entity. First, the procuring entity should assess or review their ongoing procurement. So, dapat i-review po natin kung, kalimbawa, ngayon po nag-declare tayo ng state of calamity, the procuring entity through the Bits and Awards Committee should conduct review on their ongoing project or ongoing procurement. Ayan. And in the assessment and review of their plan, future, or ongoing projects, the procuring entity may identify projects that could either be, number one, continued, so in spite of the state of calamity, will still proceed with the procurement. Number two, discontinued or terminated, so pwede rin na po i-terminate kasi hindi na po natin kailangan. Or number three, to suspend temporarily while the, the, the declaration is still effective or the, the, the calamity is still, is still affecting us. No? So in short, 
The procuring entity after the review may choose among the three options allowable under the resolution. Number one, to still continue. Number two, to discontinue or terminate. Or number three, to temporarily suspend. So, yun po yung pwede natin gawin. Now, if we intend to continue, so ipagpapatuloy natin yung procurement natin, and then we want also our health not to be sacrificed, no? our welfare or our safety will not be sacrificed, sabi ng ating resolution, the procuring entity may maximize existing government procurement rules and regulations with regard to conducting its activity. At ano ang mga policies na yun? Number one, instead of conducting meetings face-to-face, -face, kasi nga, mataas ang cases ng COVID natin, okay, we can use video conferencing, webcasting, or similar technology in the conduct of any back meetings. Kahit bit opening pa yan, pre-bit conference pa yan, pre-procurement conference pa yan. So pwede po natin gawin yan using online platforms, katulad ng Zoom, Teams, and any other available platforms sa ating LGU. Ano pa? Sabi nila, passing on of documents from one person to another may also be uh, transmitting the virus. So in that case, we may adapt the use of digital signatures in signing procurement-related documents. Okay? Para wala na nga tayong face-to-face -face interaction, ang document natin online pa. Yan. So siguro safe na safe tayo. Yan. Okay, pero kung uh, paano naman yung submission ng mga bids? Ayan. The resolution also provides that procuring entities are allowed already to uh, to include in their bidding documents or in the request for price quotation information allowing their bidders to submit their bids through email or fax mail. Okay, submission of these documents through this modality is now allowed. However, subject to submission of the printed copies as soon as practicable as determined by the Bids and Awards Committee. Okay, in relation to the documents being submitted, okay, bidders are also allowed to use other forms of electronic or digital signatures in all procurement role-related documents submitted to the procuring entity. So, lumalabas na pwede na pong mag-online bidding ang ating, ang ating agency. Okay? Para at least hindi na rin po, uh, hindi na rin po magkakaroon ng face-to-face -face interaction sa ating mga bidders or sa mga participants natin. And you know, this is not only applicable for public bidding. No? This can also be adopted for alternative methods of procurement. Okay. However, if we allow electronic bid submission, no, um, the bid submission can be done in two manners. So, dalawang, dalawang options po ang pwedeng gamitin ng ating Bids and Awards Committee for the submission of our bids, no, bids po ng ating mga bidders. Number one, it could be through any electronic means possible. Example, email. Kahit anong platform yan, no, Google, Yahoo, or anong available na meron tayo. However, we have to remember that even if we are allowing them, when we are allowing them to submit their bids online through an email, they will still follow the same uh, the same procedure of submission. So similar to manual, we are requiring them to submit using the two envelope procedure. Yan ganun din sa online. So replicate lang po siya sa online. Kaya lang, syempre, online po submission walang manual copies. Okay, or if we don't have email or we don't like that to be submitted through an email, we can also use the GPPB online portal created by the Government Procurement Policy Board in their website. Ayan. Okay, so dalawa yung option natin. Kung magsasubmit sila ng electronic mail, they will have to observe two security factor procedure. And what are these two security factor procedure? Number one, the documents to be submitted should be converted into archive format compression. Pag di nyo alam yan, ang tawag lang po natin dyan, zip. Zinizip lang po natin yung mga files nila. And other than that, it must be password protected. Okay, the documents to be submitted must be password protected. Reason, in order to protect the credibility of the documents to be submitted, kasi para hindi po ma 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 makita ng iba yung mga submissions natin, especially the bid offer. Uh, because syempre, pag nakita yan, matatalo yung bidder. Okay, so the password will be known only by the bidder or the bidder's representative, which can only be disclosed during the actual bid opening. So, it is disclosed lang po niya during the bid opening kapag ka mag-open na po through online. Okay, 
Upon receipt of the first and second envelopes, however, the procuring entity shall generate a bid receipt page for the official time of submission, which can be saved or printed by okay. by the bidder, no, um, recorded by the bidder that can serve as their evidence that they were able to submit their bids on time. Okay, so take note. Kapag ang gagamitin po natin ay email, the email must be capable of generating audit real transactions, yung tinatawag natin automatic acknowledgement. Okay, to ensure security, integrity, and authenticity of the documents being submitted. At least, there will be a log no, or a record saying that the bidding documents were submitted on time. Or, if ever submitted late or after the deadline, at least the Bits and Awards Committee will have a basis of not opening the document submitted considering that it was submitted after the deadline. And okay, when we are, uh, we will want to use no, yung ating other options, the use of the GPPB online portal, ang gagawin na po natin is we simply go to the website of the GPPB, ito po yun, https colon slash slash gppbgovph.com Kapag hindi pa kayo nagre-register, the, the, the system or the, the website will only be requiring you to, to register your, your entity. No? And after registration, uh, immediately magko-confirm na po yung registration natin, magsasend ng mga uh, confirming con um, uh, email sa atin to confirm our registration. And then pwede na natin gamitin. No? Uh, the creation of the GPPB portal was established by item 9.0 of circular number 1 that's 2020 and uh, it is um, it will further develop no, to allow um, procuring entities um, use the facility as a venue for opening of bids and for bidders for them to submit their bids no? if you have time siguro after our uh, training you can visit the portal and look into the possible use of that, that portal in our uh, in our bidding procedure or in our procurement activities. Okay, meron ba tayong requirement kung gagawa tayo or gagamitin natin yung online bid submission? Yes. Okay, resolution number 12, the 2020 provides that the only requirement prior to publishing our opportunity in the field jobs is for the procuring entity to submit a certification. No? The certification must be issued by the highest official managing the information technology system of our agency, describing the electronic system, the procedure to be used, okay, for the electronic submission and receipt of bids in compliance with the requirement of resolution number 9-2020. Okay, ito po yung sample ng certification which can also be downloaded along with resolution number 12-2020. No? After filling that up, okay, and signing, no, the the document will have to be emailed through IT certification at gppb.gov.ph. Take note, the certification will only be considered as a one-time requirement. Ano ibig sabihin ng one-time requirement? This will only be required during the first time that we'll be adopting online bidding. First time lang. So kapag na-issue na, na certification tapos nag-publish na kayo, all succeeding procurement activities, no, regardless of mode of procurement, can already be done online without the need of issuing another certification, one-time requirement. Okay, so ano yung procedure natin? No, the invitation to bid, including the bidding documents, should clearly state whether the procuring entity should allow the submission and receipt of bids through electronic means. No, sa ating latest Philippine bidding documents naman, nakalagay naman po doon yung mga options or information that we need to retain in our final bidding document to provide information on the submission online. Bidders shall submit their bids through any of the above-mentioned online electronic facilities at any time prior to the closing date and time specified in the bidding documents. And upon receipt of the first and second envelope, procuring entities should generate a bid receipt page for the official time of submission, which can be saved or printed by the bidder as an evidence that they were able to submit their bids on time. Okay? So, yan po yung ating procedure for online. So pagkatapos niyan, no, uh, syempre, katulad rin ng manual. Sa manual submission kasi allow din ng modification. Eh. So online, we also allow modification of bids. No? They can modify their bids or withdraw their bids at any time before the deadline for the submission and receipt of bids. Where a bidder modifies the bid, no, it shall be allowed to retrieve its original 
Uh, it shall not be allowed to retrieve the original bit kasi yung email niya, hindi naman natin pwedeng ibalik sa kanya pag na-email niya. Kaya lang, eh, hindi na natin bubuksan. No? However, kapag nag-withdraw siya, uh, the bidder will no longer be allowed to submit another bid. <clears throat> for modifications, uh, ang gagawin lang po niya is for the bidder to submit uh, another bid equally secured, properly identified. However, will include uh, modification in the file name no? para malaman ni procuring entity okay, na yun ay yung modification o yung bagong bid na sinabay niya. Okay? The, the procuring entity will no longer be allowed to or required to return anymore the first submission. Ang bubuksan na lang nila ay pangalawang submission with the markings, no? modification markings. Okay? So, yan po yung online bid submission natin. Um, during declaration of state of calamity, no, we also understand that bidders may have difficulty in securing some of the documents that we require during competitive bidding, such as uh, requiring the bid securing declaration to be notarized and other documents that are required to be notarized, such as the omnibus one statement. Okay, now, if there is a declaration of state of calamity or implementation of a higher restriction for COVID, due to COVID-19, procuring entities are allowed to accept alternative documentary requirements, such as unnotarized bid securing declaration, unnotarized omnibus sworn statement, expired mayor's permit, no? however, it should be accompanied by official receipt of renewal, and performance securing declaration as performance security. Remember, these alternative documentary requirements are only allowed when there are declarations of state of calamity or other community, uh, other similar restrictions. Okay. Kapag sinabi natin performance securing declaration, ang reference po natin dyan ay resolution number 16, that's 2020. Okay. Who just recently, when the GPPB just recently issued yung bagong uh, format po natin or content ng ating bid securing declaration. Uh, downloadable po yan sa ating website. No? Feel free to download it. Okay. It is similar uh, to PSD in the framework agreement. No? The declaration state among other things that winning bidders shall be backlisted being qualified to participate in any government procurement activity for one year for first offense or two years no? for if there are prior offenses in the event that it violates any of the conditions stated in their contracts. Yan. So yan po yung sample ng performance security declaration. Inulit ko, allowed lang po yung tanggapin kapag merong declaration ng state of calamity or similar restrictions. Kapag wala naman po, hindi po yan pwedeng isubmit ni winning bidder in lieu of the other forms prescribed under the IRR. Okay. So yun ay kapag i-continue. Okay. The next option is to suspend. Yan. Pwedeng i-suspend ni procuring entity muna yung kanyang procurement pag may declaration. So temporary, mag i muna sila ng activity. The only requirement is that they should issue notice of suspension informing all affected bidders that the procuring entity temporarily is suspending the procurement undertaking. And then upon lifting of the state of calamity or the restriction, okay, the procuring entity will issue notice of resumption informing the affected bidders that they are now resuming with the with the procurement undertaking. So what will happen in between period? Yan. Isasama ba natin sa bilangan? Alam naman natin na may mga prescribed period tayo sa procurement. Okay? In the resolution, it says that when the procurement is under suspension due to state of calamity, there will be tolling of the periods. Tolling of the periods meaning the period within the suspension will no longer be included in the counting of the mandatory periods of conducting the activity. So, hindi po maapektuhan yung uh, validity ng ating procurement. Okay, kung sakaling uh, mag-issue tayo ng suspension due to COVID-19 or uh, due to state of calamity. Procuring entities are also allowed to cancel or terminate their procurement activities. Yan. Okay, now, in the tolling of periods, ganito po yung example natin dyan para maliwanag. Ano? Example, nag-open tayo ng bid ng May 12th, Ayan, after doing the process for 16 days, we are uh, ongoing con uh, conducting the um, post qualification. May 28, nag issue ng nag issue po siya sila ng uh, ano yun, declaration ng state of calamity. So anong gagawin ni procuring entity? mag issue siya ng notice of suspension uh, sa kanya mga sa kanya mga uh, bidders no na, na sumali sa bidding. 
Okay? Siyempre, ang state of calamity will run for a period of one month. So, na-lift yung state of calamity ng June 29. Okay? June 30, mag issue na po ng notice of resumption si procuring entity, no? si Bids and Awards Committee. From May 29 to June 29, yan po yung tinatawag natin na told period or period of suspension. Hindi po natin yung isasama doon sa period ng uh, pagbilang ng mga mandatory periods natin procurement. Example, when the award of contract provided the IRR should be done within 90 days or 3 months from the date of bid opening, dapat ang deadline natin ng, ng, ng award of contract should be August 10. Pero dahil nagkaroon ng tolling of period from May 29 to June 29, okay, uh, nag-resume tayo ng June 30, magre-resume tayo na meron lang tayo, meron pa tayo na iiwan na 74 days. Bakit 74 days? Hindi natin binilang yung May 9, 29 to June 29 kasi na toll yan. It will only be 90 minus 16. So 74 days. In short, from June 30, magkakaroon tayo ng extended. No? Yung ating bagong deadline for award of contract will be up to September 12. Uh, to comply with the maximum period of awarding the contract. Clear? Clear? Type clear kung maliwanag po yung tolling of periods natin. Anyway, kung may tanong kayo dyan, please type them in our chat box. Okay? Um, knowledge check po tayo. Yes, sir. So, at this point, we will be having our first knowledge check for this topic. So, kindly select your answer via the Zoom polling feature. Our question is, Pursuant to GPPB Resolution Number 09-2020, use of other forms of digital or electronic signature is only allowed for competitive bidding or public bidding purposes only for goods and services, infrastructure projects, and consulting services. Again, pursuant to GPPB Resolution Number 09-2020, Use of other forms of digital or electronic signature is only allowed for competitive bidding or public bidding purposes only for goods and services, infrastructure projects, and consulting services. So is it A, true, or B, false? So please select your answer po in our polling feature and we will... Close the fe polling feature in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So most of our participants answered false. Ayan. Thank you very much, Ma'am Janelle. No, pero may 38% na true. Okay. Um, ang tamang sagot po natin dyan ay false. No? Uh, yung paggamit po natin, yung digital signature at saka use of other forms ay allowed din po pati po sa mga alternative methods of procurement natin. Hindi lang po limited yan sa public bidding. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So, ayan po. Please be reminded na it is also allowed for AMT, alternative modes of procurement. So, we will now proceed to the rest of our lecture. Okay, we continue our discussion. Punta naman tayo sa submission ng ating mga reports. Ayan. Okay, take note ha. Okay, we are all mandated no, to submit our procurement reports no, as provided in the IRR. In fact, uh, the GPPB even issued no, resolution number 11-2020 and circular number 22-2020 take took effect in May 27-2020. Okay, providing us um, guidelines on posting of our annual procurement plans, PMRs that were duly approved by the HOPE or each duly designated, no? Uh, in the duly designated sections of the procuring entity's website or in the absence of such at any conspicuous place reserved for the purpose with the premises of the procuring entity, no? Uh, as provided in the resolution in the circular, take note, the GPPB shall not post 
the procurement reports in its website. So sa website na po ninyo, sa transparency website po ninyo, um, ipopost yan at saka sa ating conspicuous place. However, we are still required to submit yung mga reports na yan sa GPPB. Kaya lang, the submission will, will be uh, through email na. Submitted through email. So, procuring entities are required to submit the APPs, the PMRs, and the APCPIs duly approved by the HOPE through email. No, through email in the following format. So, pag magsasubmit po tayo, dalawang file formats po nung document ang isasubmit natin. One for Excel and another for PDF. So, sabay po lagi yan na ini-email. Okay? Printed copies are no longer accepted by the GPPB. So, wala na kayong magsasubmit ng mga printed copies kasi babalik lang po sa atin yan. Okay? So, email na lang po. At least, mas tipid pa yan kasi internet lang ang kailangan natin. So, kung magsasubmit po tayo, saan natin i-email? Ganito lang po. Papalitan lang po natin yung address dun sa kung anong document ang isasubmit natin. Example, ang isasubmit po natin ay APP. Isasubmit po natin yan sa email address na app at gppb.gov.ph. Kung PMR naman yan, PMR at gppb.gov.ph. Kung APCPI naman yan, APCPI at gppb.gov.ph. In case of discrepancies no, sa, sa review ni GPPB, nakita niya na hindi pareho yung laman ng PDF file at nung, nung Excel file na sinabit mo, it will be the PDF file that will prevail. Okay? Limanag? So PDF file at saka yung Excel format ang isasubmit po natin. Okay? Um, if you uh, do not have a copy yet of the format, no, yung mga forms na gagamitin natin for the APP, PMR, and APCPI, uh, please download them to our downloadable link. Yan po yung mga link natin. Or visit our GPPB website, click downloadables, at makikita nyo doon yung pangalan ng APP, PMR, and APCPI. Just download them in the website. Okay? Pwede po natin gawin yun. Ayan. Um, in the circular, it said that uh, the procuring entity through its back secretariat is required to post dun sa ating website at dun sa ating conspicuous place yung mga reports na yan. Okay? So, the GPPB also wanted to make sure that you have complied with that requirement. So, in addition to the Excel and PDF format to be submitted, you will also be required to submit along with it posting certification and the format is provided under the circular. You can also download the format in our GPPB website. No? Yan yung type ng certification natin that should be emailed together with the APP PMRs, electronic submission, uh, that should be signed by the back secretariat then. Okay, stating that the procuring entity has complied with the posting requirements using the prescribed form. Yan. Para ma-assure na talagang na-post. Kung hindi mo na-post, tapos nag-certify ka, ah, may problema ka. Di ba? Okay? So, yan po. So, tatlong document ang in-email natin. I repeat. Ano yun? The Excel file, the PDF file, and then the posting certification. Tatlo. Every time mag-email tayo, three files ang laman dapat mo. Reminder that uh, the APP shall be approved based on the approved budget of the agency. Yan that the submission of indicative APPs are not considered compliance because that is not required by the GPPB. Okay, the GPPB TSO shall not accept any submission of the indicative APP. At the same time, is required only to be posted in the transparency seal of the procuring entity. So ang, ang sinasubmit po natin ay yung final annual procurement plan natin. Huwag po yung indicative. Okay, kapag APCPI ang isasubmit natin, the following forms should be submitted. No? Ano yun? Self-assessment form, consolidated procurement monitoring report, the APCPI questionnaire, and the action plan. Sa so Excel format, isang, isang file document lang to. Eh. Pero pagdating po sa PDF format, eh kailangan uh, meron po kayong apat na PDF files na isasubmit kasi magkakaiba po yung, yung forms na yan pag sinubmit natin. So convert mo ng PDF per... Uh, per per file or no per tab dun sa ating uh, Excel format no? para ibig sabihin one Excel file lang kasi isang file lang naman talaga nandoon lang sa tab pero yung PDF file niya apat no may self assessment form na uh, file name may consolidated PMR may APCPI questionnaire at merong action plan 
Ayan. We also take note of the different deadline of submission. Ayan. So, may mga deadlines tayo prescribed in the IRR. For the APP, the first submission not later than January 31 of the current year, changes within the first semester, January to June, should be submitted July of the current year. Changes within the second semester, July to December, should be submitted January of the succeeding year. For the procurement monitoring report, this is required to be submitted on a per semester basis. For the per semester, January to June, not later than July 14 of the current year. For the second semester, July to December, not later than January 14 of the succeeding year. For APCPA results, once a year lang yan, kasi annual yan. The deadline of submission is March 31 of the succeeding year, according to the IRR. Except when the GPPB issued resolution extending the deadline of the submissions. Yan. Katulad ngayon, no? 2022, the GPPB has issued resolution number one, that's 2022, extending the deadline for the submission of the following documents. Hopefully, nakahabol kayo kasi tapos na lahat ng mga to. For the FY 2021 second semester PMR instead of January 14, pwede na-extend po siya until March 31. For the second semester APP 2021, instead of submitting it January 31, the deadline was extended up to January and uh, March 31. For the 2022 APP, instead of January 31, it was extended to March 31. And for the 2021 APCP result, it was extended up to June 30 instead of up to March 31. Pero tapos na mga yan. Hopefully nasabit natin, no? Otherwise, baka may problema sa performance-based bonus later. Ha? Okay? Yeah, please remember the deadlines. Okay. Um, upon submission electronically, pag nag-email po kayo, the GPPB or the the web, the, the email of the GPPB will give you auto-acknowledgement. Receipt of the auto-acknowledgement from the TSO upon submission of the certifications and reports shall be your, your, your document proving that you have submitted the, the reports on time. Ang problema, paano kapag wala kayong na-receive na auto-acknowledgement? And in case when you have not received any auto-acknowledgement within an hour after the submission, you will have to resubmit it. Ibig sabihin, baka hindi natanggap or nagka-problema along the way. You resubmit the certifications and reports to the same electronic mail. If no acknowledgement is still received, you have to call the, the, the GPPB in the divisions in charge from these numbers, no? Yan mga numbers, to confirm whether they were able to receive the submission. If they did receive receive the submission, excuse me, um, you will have, no, uh, you will have to request, no, the, the, the GPPBTSO to give you acknowledgement. And because only the acknowledgement report shall be used as a basis, no, or, or proof of submitting the reports. Yeah. Remember, ulitin ko, although, Sino po yung mga LGU dito na nakatanggap ng performance-based bonus na? Ayan, paki-type paki po sa ating chat, chat box yung kami kung nakatanggap na kayo ng performance-based bonus. Yung mga hindi nakakatanggap, baka hindi kayo nakakatanggap, hindi kayo nakakapag-comply. Remember, uh, the submission of the procurement reports are, one, are, are, among the, are among the requirements, no? Requirements or conditions for the grants so performance-based bonus. No? That procuring entity shall also be responsible in ensuring the correctness, completeness, and timeliness of their submission. Okay, remember, the auto-acknowledgement received from GPPB serves only as the only proof that you have submitted and does not guarantee compliance in terms of correctness, completeness, and timeliness of the report. Okay. If you want to know the list of Complying agencies, uh, the GPPBTSO is posting it in its website. No? Uh, or those which have submitted their APPs, please check the website. Kung nakita yung pangalan ng agency nyo doon, uh, it simply means that you have complied with the requirement. Okay? Yan, ma'am, nalis check po tayo. Yes, at this point, we will be having another knowledge check. So, for this topic, kindly again select your answer via the Zoom polling feature. Our question is, pursuant to GPPB Circular 02-2020, the BAC Secretariat shall submit a certification to GPPB stating that the PE's APP 
and PMR, duly approved by the HOPE, have been posted in the agency's website or in the absence of such at any conspicuous place reserved. So is it true or false? So again, if you have any questions, please uh, type in in the Zoom chat box or to our Facebook Live viewers, if you have questions, please also type in at the comment section and our secretariat will uh, collate all your questions related to the topic. So is the answer true or false? We will be closing the poll feature in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So ayon, most of our participants po answered A, true. Yeah, and thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, and congratulations to our participants. No, This might be our last polling uh, uh, knowledge check na yata, ma'am. No? Okay, the correct answer to the question is true. Tama po yung marami. No? Karamihan ng ating participants. Okay, so that it's the back secretariat who should be issuing the certification. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And we will proceed with the rest of our lecture. to the proceed procurement updates, policies, and some innovations no, that were initiated by the Government Procurement Policy Board in response to uh, our events, no, uh, especially the COVID-19. So the GPTB issued resolution number 6, that's 2021, and circular number 2, that's 2021. Ayan. This is related to the use of uh, negotiated procurement emergency cases as a modality Okay, as a procurement modality to be reflected in the annual procurement plan. Okay, it provides that procurement may commence without the approved APP subject to validation of funds lang, no, for the purpose of submission of the approved APP prior to payment. Uh, it also provides the documentary requirements no, that we will be requiring from our bidders uh, using the negotiated procurement emergency cases. Okay, uh, nakalagay po doon that uh, regular documentary requirements provided under Section 53.2 of the IRR are not applicable for COVID-19 uh, vaccine procurement as this will be determined by the DOH and the National Task Force for COVID-19 in their negotiations. Advanced payment is also now allowed no, under this resolution which is which is which which can be up to the cost of the contract price. So pwede na nang i-advance kung magkano yung presyo ng vaccine. Okay, if the same is required by the supplier, manufacturer, or distributor because yung vaccine will be a very important measure to mitigate the effect ng ating COVID-19. Okay, the, the, the GPPB has also issued resolution number 15, that's 2020. I hope you have read that, no? And GPPB circular number 4, that's 2020. Ano to? Approving the use of the simplified bidding documents for goods and infrastructure projects. Ito po yung patungkol doon sa ating 6th edition Philippine Bidding Documents for Goods and Infrastructure Projects. No? Significantly revising the content of the bidding document from 112 pages to 40 for, for goods and 114 pages to 35 for procurement of infra. Yan. So the bidding documents are also downloadable no, sa ating website. No? Please do download it. GPPB Circle number 4 does 2020 provides the guidelines for the preparation of the simplified bidding documents for goods and infrastructure projects. Dito po natin makikita yung portal. At syempre nakalagay din po dito yung mga prescribed content. Kasi may mga updated content po tayo ng mga forms na gagamitin natin during bidding procedure. Please do download no, yung ating uh, mga forms and of course the circular no, for our readings din. Okay, meron na rin po tayong blacklisting portal that were issued that, that was created through GPPB resolution number 14 that's 2020 requiring the use of online blacklisting portal for posting updating status of blacklisted entities in the consolidated blacklisting report ang features nito may posting of blacklisting orders updating of status of blacklisting entity automatic updating of the consolidated blacklisting report and automatic notification to the procuring entity GPPB TSO and FieldJeps if or once a procuring entity uploaded no, yung kanyang blacklisting order doon sa ating portal. So take note, pag in-upload natin, na-identify natin yung bidder dyan, the field jobs will automatically be notified and 
Ay, mamark po niya yung, yung pangalan na yan. Actually, tatanggalin po niya temporarily. Yung pangalan ng bidder na in-upload niyo sa kanyang website. Okay? Pa hindi na siya makita. Okay. Uh, as of the moment, there are 144 procuring entities who have registered. Uh, in 2020, 118. 2021, 26. Now, if you're Procuring entity is yet to be registered. Please, no, register your entity in the blacklisting portal so that you can be able to upload also your blacklisting order in the in the website. Okay. Um, uh, the GPPB has also revised and automated uh, the, the different forms. Yeah. So, meron tayo mga automated forms downloadable in the downloadable in the website, no? Uh, na dinevelop to eliminate inefficiencies and errors, readily available information, and convenient of user-friendly. Palang application na po siya. Yan. Please, please download, no? Para matry natin kung, kung paano gamitin. At least, hindi na tayo mag-encode na napakarami. Ayan. How about the accountability and transparency in government procurement? Ano yung mga bago, no? Uh, the GPP best issued resolution number 4 das 2021 and circular number 1 das 2021 as we have provided kanina. Providing user and different uh, checklist uh, that guys procuring entity in posting their RA9184. So meron ng checklist kung kailan natin pinopost at kung saan natin pinopost. Provided also in that circular and resolution, uh, yung bagong posting natin for uh, contracts with approved budget for the contract more than 50 million. Okay? Um, as mandated by Administrative Order 34 Series of 2020. No? A requirement, we have to publish that in the newspaper. Yung award lang, no? the award information of contracts. Okay, the resolution or circular also reiterates the mandatory use by all procuring entities on the blacklisting portal. Yeah. Online access to observers is now also required. No, katulad ng sinabi natin kanina, no? okay, we have to provide online access to our observers sa ating FieldJobs website. If we cannot be able to give them access, please no, uh, inform GPPB that access cannot be provided through this email. Observer at gppb.gov.ph Okay, ang, gaya, ang requirement po na yan ay minamandato ng GPPB Circular Number 1 was 2021. Okay, uh, yung dashboard po natin, gumanda na po siya. No? Kung sa inyo, may mga nagmamasters dyan related to procurement, you can visit our dashboard uh, to determine uh, to get some information, ito na po itsura niya. The procurement dashboard was launched in February 2020, providing information derived and available from the procurement reports that were submitted. You can generate uh, information related to timeliness of procurement, BD statistics, supplier participation, procurement risk, and gender mainstreaming, so mga procurement activities conducted by government agencies nationwide, at least for those who are submitting their procurement reports to the GPPB. Ma'am, nalisya po tayo. And for the last knowledge check question for this topic, our question is, Pursuant to GPPB Resolution Number 14-2020, procuring entities are required to use the online blacklisting for portal for posting and updating the status of the blacklisted entities in the consolidated blacklisting report? Is it A, true or B, false? So please select your answer po in our Zoom polling feature. And we will be closing our polling in five, Four, three, two, and one. So their answer, our participants answered true. Ayan, thank you very much, Ma'am Janelle. Akala ko may, wala na, meron pa palang isa. Ayan, this is our last knowledge check question. So the correct answer is letter A. True po yan. We are all mandated to use the online blacklisting portal to post and update the status of all entities that we have blacklisted in our procuring entity. So, thank you sa lahat ng mga sumasagot sa ating mga knowledge check questions. Maraming salamat, ma'am. Yes, sir. 
So let us continue po to the last part of our lecture. Okay. Ayan. Thank you for those who have participated. Let's continue our discussion. Okay. Sa diagnostics, no? Uh, interim review of procurement performance can also be seen in the website. No? The review of procurement performance for procuring entities for the first semester PMRs uh, can, can also be uh, downloaded. Uh, can also be seen in our, in our website. No? Uh, this can be used to gather information for actual conduct of procurement, assist procuring entities by providing diagnostic feedback. So, magpi-feedback po yung diagnosis sa atin. Parang doktor, di ba? Okay, sasabihin niya kung ready yung mga projects natin, efficient ba tayo, or nagkakandak pa tayo ng early procurement. It can be conducted for policy research. Ayan, so ito po yung example ng interim review of procurement performance results natin. Ayan, so we can use this as information, no, data, para makapag-conduct ng research or possible improvement of our procurement policies. Okay? So I think that's the last slide for the second presentation. Thank you very much for your participation and active um, uh, listening no, sa, ating, uh, sa ating presentation. Thank you very much. I think now we'll open for open forum. At this point, we will be having the open forum for this topic. So uh, we have one question lang po from the Facebook live comment section. So, our question is, Sir, ano ang dapat gawin kasi hindi ko ma-upload ang reading documents? Ang lumalabas is exemption, limit exceeded drive, doon sa other information. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Home General. Sa ating question, actually, technical issue yan doon sa ating PhilJeps website. Pero I think, uh, ang pwede po natin gawin dyan, we can request our IT personnel to clear the catch ng sa ating browser. Okay, so i-clear lang po yung catch ng ating browser kasi ang ibig po sabihin niyan ay baka marami na pong laman na save na mga cookies dun sa catch natin. Just clear the catch and then try it again. Pag hindi po po niyo makapag-upload, okay, after clearing the catch, so I think we have to call our administrator ng ating field jobs para po sila po yung uh, mag-resolve or mag provide po sa atin ng technical support po sa ating uh, field jobs account. Thank you, sir. And that ends our open forum. If you have no other questions na po in our Zoom chat box, wala na pong hahabol. So if you have more questions, you may still ask them out even after this webinar by visiting slido.com. All you have to do is to just type in the event code hashtag government procurement PH to which the GPPB TSO will answer true on issuance or true FAQs. With that, we would like to thank our resource speaker, Mr. Reynaldo Villon, for leading a very informative and comprehensive discussion for today's session. For our winners, our event secretariat will contact you on how you may claim your special token. So be before we end our first day of training, let me synthesize the lecture for our day one of our training. So on the first part of our training, we discuss about the major concepts of the government procurement activities and processes and the uniform interpretation of the procurement law. And for the second half of our program, the topic discuss about the efficient procurement measures amidst calamity and community quarantine through GPPD Resolution 09-2020, simplified posting and submission of procurement report and its latest policies and innovation. So today's session is led by Mr. Villon. So thank you so much, sir, for accommodating us today. Maraming maraming salamat din po. Before we end today's session, allow me to make a few final reminders. So after the end of our program, participants are likewise reminded to evaluate the training activity and our resource speaker through Google Form. So the link will be shared to you by our event secretariat. 
Rest assured that all information gathered for this online training shall be treated with utmost confidentiality consistent with the provisions of the Data Privacy Act. Important reminders on the certificates. Certificate of attendance shall only be issued to confirm participants who are present all throughout our five-day activity. Certificate of completion shall be awarded to confirm participants who successfully completed the training, participated in the knowledge check, and complied with all our requirements. Otherwise, certificate of participations will be furnished. So for questions and other concerns, please contact us through the email flash on your screen. Finally, for tomorrow's session, please be reminded that the program shall start at 8 a.m. And we would like to request everyone to uh, log in at least 10 minutes before the program. So before we end our training session, please open your cameras for our group photo opportunity with our resource speaker. Ayan, ready na po ba tayo? Ayan, so we will be taking uh, three shots. So smile in three, two, one. Another shot po. In three, two, one. And lastly, isa pa po. Three, two, one. That's it. That concludes the first day of the online training for the Municipal Local Government Units on Republic Act No. 9184 and its 2016 Revised Implementing Rules and Regulations for Batch 1. This has been your facilitator, Janelle De La Cruz. Thank you and see you all tomorrow.